Shout out to the After Party Hangover Tripod Sessions. Listen to Karen Caesar, APPW's Superstar of the Year, the Great Bredsky 99, and the Mega Pound Host as well. Now hit that music mangria. Oh, and by the way, Cynic is still a bitch. Am I saying that right? Bitch. Hey, good morning. Have been sleeping for too long, I'm yawning. They buried me in black soup, black tie. I'm alive and I woke up looking flat. So from now on, from, from now on, you can count me Lazarus. From, from now on, you can count me Lazarus. From, from now on, you can count me Lazarus. From a dead man walk, from, from now on, you can count me Lazarus. From, from now on, you can count me Lazarus. From, from now on, you can count me Lazarus. From a dead man walk, Lazarus. They got a missing person report and they can't find the body. Let them tell the story, I was shot up at a party. Or was I high speed? Welcome to the After Party Hangover, and these are the tripod sessions. However, one of the tripod is missing. But the miracle, Stixie Drip Drip, in for the hot tag, my friend. How are you doing today, and how was your week? Gentlemen, the best bout machine of APPW got the, got the signal. Cesar said, buddy, I need you to cover for me on this glorious three-day weekend. I was like, I got you. So I'm here with two out of the three hosts and ready to talk a little wrestling. And hey, in honor of Stixie Drip Drip, I had to go down to my local oh, shit. store and bust out the mics, baby. Well, well, first off, we, we're starting off with an appetizer, and then we have <laughs> one. Oh. And we're going to. Yeah, I want oh, yes. to I want you to Austin those. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll make, and I'll, I'll make sure I clean up the mess, too. <laughs> And as always, he is currently the APPW Superstar of the Year. Say it louder. I couldn't hear you. I couldn't hear you. What was that? What was that last? Superstar. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> the Great Bresky 99. How are you doing tonight? And how was your week, my friend? Uh, you, you know, you can call me a lot of things, Mangri. You can call me the Great Bresky 99. You can call me the Opportunity in APPW. You, 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 you can't call me that. Uh, you can... You can call me the Great Breast 99, call me the superstar of the year. And I frankly, after last night's dynamite, I think you can call me Bresky Drip Drip. But uh, for the, you know, I've had a. <laughs> Decent assist is in the, or is in the mail right now. <laughs> All right, Vince. Uh, you know, we had a, had a pretty good week, you know, just kind of relaxing. And, you know, I, I had a, I had a little bit, I got a little scared on Wednesday nights. I'm like, oh shit, dynamite's tonight. Then I'm like, oh, thank God, I can wait until Friday to worry about that. And, uh, and then I, I had to suffer through Friday night, but luckily Dynamite, it was sandwiched between Dynamite and SmackDown. So I was at least to be out, have two good wrestling shows on the bread and then the meat of the sandwich was like rotten. But uh, yeah, no, just excited to talk some shop. Excited to have Stixie Drip Drip here as the third leg of the tripod and happy to get, happy to get talking about all the positive things that happened this week in wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I do share the same feeling Wednesday and Thursday. I was like, Wow. Okay. No. No. AEW. All right. But then Friday was just an avalanche of wrestling. It's but, like this is what uh, happiness feels like on Wednesday night. I, I feel like I can go out and have fun. Like this is great. <laughs> and now kicking it off with the A show of the week in the city. Uh, Big Dick Vic, Wade Barrett, and Beth uh, lay out the night for us, and then we get Shotzi and Ember, Tank and all versus Straight Sonya and Walbut. Uh, Roy to J Lo and Kai with great teamwork. White Shotzi has Texas Clover. What? <laughs> oh, wow. Wild Shotzi. Hot start. Hot start. What the? F Wild Shotzi had Texas Cloverleaf <laughs> in. Straight Sonia pulled Kai out of the hold. Ref just stood there. There was no commercial picture in picture. Back from break, while Ember was punching Straight Sonia, she did a windup that looked like Ross saying, fuck you. I don't know if you guys caught that. Uh, lots of great ass, lots of great ass shots in this match. Thank you, cameraman. Ember countered the one-arm powerbomb into a stunner eclipse. Ember and Shotzi pick up the win, 
angry straight Sonia murders Shotzi as they make Ember watch. Sticks Adam. What were your thoughts on the opening contest of this week's NXT? Thought it was a beautiful way to start it off. And the one thing I will say is I love the uh, I love how Ember countered the choke slam into the yeah. eclipse. That was just so awesome. It was an excellent way to start off a, a really good show we had for a, a Tuesday night. The great Bretsky 99 wax poetic on straight Sonya and Walbutt falling. <laughs> Shots. I mean, I- Chotsky and Ember. <laughs> yo, 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 rest in power, Cesar. You know what? Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, I, I enjoy the start. I mean, I don't, obviously, this is not like the best women's tag match of all time because I mean, there is no best women's tag match of all time. But I mean, I think it was still, it was still good. NXT has the best women's division in the world. They said that. They always say that because it's true. Um, I think this was really good, not necessarily, I mean, for the, not necessarily for the in ring action. I mean, I love the eclipse counter, that was incredible. Um, but I think this was great for the fact that it planted a lot of seeds because it planted the seed of Ember versus, uh, Raquel for a potential NXT women's title match. Cause they had that whole, like she countered the, she countered the, the one, the power bomb with the eclipse, like you mentioned, and they, they were kind of being the ones going at it. And she wanted to make Ember watch as like, she attacked Shotzi later on. They planted the seeds of Raquel, of Raquel not taking the pin. And she was doing everything to make sure Dakota would not get tapped out or pinned, but then dakota lost the match for them so they planted that seed of maybe raquel's like hey i'm carrying all the weight around here for down the line they also uh they planted the seed i really like this because at some point in the match um big dick vic asked ways hey you know do you think this is kind of bad of our women's champion to be focusing only on the tag belts like she's actually the she's the singles champion shouldn't she be doing single stuff and you know wade's like oh no she's just expanding everything she's being everywhere but i like that the idea they're planning (laughs) <laughs> I like the idea that they're planning the seed of like Raquel is basically like they, they obviously you want to have a fighting champion, but every and this is the thing I mentioned last week, I believe it was last week on the tripod, is that the issue biggest issue I have with NXT is that their main champions always end up turning like either face or tweener. Like it happened with Finn, it's kind of ish happening with Cross, it happened with EO, like it happens with a lot of them. And so it's always an issue because it's like, okay, all of a sudden now that you won the title, you want to be like, I'm a fighting champion. Every week we're going to have a title match. And it kind of gets a little stale after a little bit. Um, but I like the idea that Raquel's like, no, fuck you. I'm just going to do the tag shit with, 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 with Dakota. I'm having fun doing stuff with Dakota. Like, I'm, I don't care if you want a title shot. I'm doing tag stuff. So I like that they're planting that seed to make her more of a defined heel because it started off iffy with the whole photo shoot with, you know, Rhea and, and Bianca. And then she was like, I respect Mercedes Martinez, but now it's, she's getting back on track as a heel, which I like, but um, yeah, no, a very good way to start the show. Um, just planting a lot of seeds and I'm very interested to see where they go, uh, go forward with it. Up next, Ciampa and Thatcher promo. They want round three with the grizzled young vets. Uh, dual chair throws at the end, Thatcher, Thatcher mad as well. Uh, Balor arrives, Cross and Scarlet arrive. Then we get Pete Dunn versus Bobby Fish. Well, Pete Dunn with Lorcan. It was technician versus technician. We get a sick elbow strike to Fish by Pete Dunn. There's always one move that that claps when it makes a, a connection. It always makes me go, damn. Uh, with arm lock applied by Fish, Dunn stepped on Fish's right foot to gain leverage for a well-placed strike to get out of this. Just signs that Dunn is a genius in that ring. Fish does knock Dunn out of the ring just before commercial break. No picture in picture. Dunn's left eye was busted. Doesn't stop the bruiser weight from bringing a world of pain to Fish, focusing attack on Fish's hurt elbow. After an insurugi by Dunn, Fish overhead exploder to Dunn. Dunn's head hits the bottom rope. Ouch. Despite digit manipulation, Fish able to escape submission. However, Dunn with the bitter end for the win. Lorcan attacks Fish. Lorcan puts Fish's arms and apron cord. I've never seen that before. And steps on his arm, even kicking it. No Kyle? Ah, well. The great Bretzky 99. Let's start at the top with Champa mad and now Thatcher mad. Oh, I popped. I popped so hard when he threw the chair. I was, I, oh, I lost my shit. I rewound it. And there was a lot of rewinding done on this week's NXT. I rewound that as soon as he threw the chair. Because, I mean, of course, it's a Thatcher Champa promo. And, you know, it's, it's going to be just 
you know, to use a word that's not used often in wrestling, it's going to be gritty. It's going to be, you know, impassioned, you know, it's going to be emotional. Like I want to fight you. And it, because there's, there's a, there's a, of course, a promo later by the grizzled young vets and uh, which we'll get, which we'll get to, but I like the way that they countered it um, later on in the night. But I think, yeah, this is fun. I'm always down for round three of uh gyv and and thatcher and champa mad but yeah when he threw that chair and then they both came back and were like staring at the camera oh great great promo a lot of great promos in nxt there's one in particular later but this was a very good promo from them um yeah then everyone arrives to the ring whatever they always do that doesn't really matter um and then the match uh i thought this was good i was surprised it went on second but again it's a, it's a tv taping so it's not i guess it's not as vital to go on like last or first um when it's a tv taping i think i liked i liked bobby's music it's kind of similar to kyle's but different enough i really liked it and i did like how they pointed out throughout the match that he's a tag guy and like he's not really used to doing singles competition at least in nxt um to kind of like explain it's like yeah bobby fish is great it's one of the best that nxt has to offer but he's not a single he's not a tag he's not a singles guy he's a tag guy so it makes sense why he'd lose like a singles master guy like pete dunn as much as you'd want him to win, like as the baby face. So it makes sense. Uh, yeah, I thought it was a very good match. The one thing I did notice was when, you know how Dunn does that, like he'll jump up and stomp on your hands, like when your yeah. hands are flat. He missed it. Yep. Like, and it was like a weird camera angle, but like you could see he missed it. So I was like, ooh, that, yeah. But other than that, it was fine. Like he targeted the triceps like that. It was very, it was a very well done match because of course it was. It was Pete Dunn in the ring. Of course, it'd be a great match. Um, and yeah, no, the, the use of the apron at the, at the outside was really creative. I have not seen that um, using the, the thing. And the announcers made, this is the good thing about NXT too. They put everyone over. Like they, they made sure to say like, hey, you know, don't forget about Oni Lorcan. The, the dude, the dude's fucking dangerous. He was also in that War Games match. Like he's, he's a dangerous dude. Um, I think again, planting seeds. I have a hunch that this will lead to Kyle versus Bobby because Kyle was saved by Bobby Bobby was not saved by Kyle. And maybe it's like, Kyle's like, listen, you sold me, you want to do it on your own. And Bobby's like, hey, what the fuck? Like, I <laughs> fucking tore my triceps again almost. What are you doing? Like, help me out there. Like, I'm trying. saved him. Remember? Fish saved. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's like, it's like what do you mean? Like, we fucking return the favor, dude. It's like, no, you want you wanted to go on your own. I'll let you go on your own. Like, why, why am I the bad guy here? So I think that that'll be a very fun match. I'm, I believe it's happened before. I'm not 100% sure. I, it might have happened in ROH or like an indie show, but I'm, I can't. Room at, I can't think of off the top of my head, but um, you know, I think this is you know a great promo by uh, Thatch and Champ. Walked to the ring and then a great match, um, even with that one slight botch. But um, yeah, no, just great stuff all around. Well, speaking of somebody who watches ROH, he watches Impact. This man has a vast knowledge of all the wrestling out there in the world. It is Stixie Drip Drip. What were your thoughts on Ch- Champa Mad and now Thatcher Man? I always, I'm always a fan. I always pop when he pulls Thatcher's mouth and he gets that toothless <laughs> grin. Love that in the promo. Um, I, I must see watch whenever Champa and toothless Timmy do anything like that. Hopefully we get around three of these guys. Cause this is, they, they put on a hell of good matches. Fish and Dunn, I thought was up there as possibly as like one of the best matches on the whole Tuesday night card. Except for the little miss the botch, like what Bretsky said. Otherwise, these two good strikers and good ground guys. And was kind of surprised that, like you guys had said, was surprised that nobody came out to help Bobby afterwards. I I had thought that if they didn't do the whole angle with Roddy of like up be given like his res- resignation, I thought him and Bobby would have been good tag team to kind of go forward. And I thought and I thought if there was an opportunity even to bring Roddy back, this would have been the time to possibly have him, have him come out of nowhere help it and then it sets up maybe uh done and uh only versus uh roddy and fish and then maybe done and only lose and they say well we're never we aren't a coat we don't do tag we're not always tagging together we'll we'll get you guys down the line and maybe gives a little bit of momentum and another tag team in the uh, tag team division have kyle o'reilly and bobby fish feuded outside of nxt Oh yeah. Yeah. There's, I think they've had a, at least a match or two in ROH. And I want to say, I want to say, I don't, I don't know the years, but I want to say, I thought they had a match in new Japan too, a long time ago. Yes. I, yeah, I think I was thinking of the, of yeah. the new Japan match. I want to say they at least had one match in ROH against each other. Who won? I don't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> my, my drunken memory only goes so far. 
I completely understand. <laughs> what if what if we get a fatal four way of all the UE members down the line? That would be bad. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. That would probably be up there at least a candidate for match of the year. Well, plus oh, yeah. it would be something fresh for them all to do because they've all been together for years and now having them all face each other, that's something fresh. None of the NXT fans will be mad at that. We've all been wanting to see them fight because we know they can go. Uh, seeing that fatal four-way, my God, that that would be that you, would be, you, that would be one that you would need to put on a pay review. I mean, it would literally like you guys always say on every every Saturday that would literally be given away free money if you had that on just a regular Tuesday night show. Oh yeah, they could name a takeover after that match. It'd be like undisputed era disputed. <laughs> or 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 undisputed. or an undisputed end of an era. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, moving on, Mercedes Martinez was walking down the hall saying she's ready to work her way back to the top. We get Creeper Neo look. Uh, Creeper Neo looking boa <laughs> stares. Uh, hit row spitting facts. Hey uh, hey, NEC, come on. That was said last week. NEC slapping L's on their head like Mario's brother. I fucking love that line. That was awesome. You know. Uh, if you didn't know, now, now you, you know. know. Now you know. Uh, Eminem versus Zeta Ramir. The athleticism of Zeta versus the strength of Eminem. Is Mercedes sick? She was pale white tonight. Wins with the air raid crash. I just noticed she looked like uh, she had that Michael Jackson disease. The lights go out. <laughs> The ring fills with smoke. Crazy Asian on Tron blowing smoke and then Eminem marked. The million dollar man was backstage. Quick chat with Booty Storm. Then approached by Robert Stonebrand. He throws money at them. He throws money at them. Uh, Robert's chick scramble to grab the money on the floor. And then it's grime time. Time for the million dollar face off. Million dollar man interrupts Grimes immediately. Why, Ted? Why? Stop story to Ted. Uh, Since you've become rich, you've lost your focus, the Million Dollar Man says. L.A. Knight interrupts. This is a combo with millionaires. Not you, nickel and dimes, Cameron Grimes says. (laughs) We get it. The guy has Kavorka, Cameron Grimes says. To the moon chants from the, the crowd. I've never heard that before. And nickel and dime chant. Knight hits his finisher to Grimes and leaves. Kid, you're just never going to get it, are you? <laughs> uh, the Million Dollar Man says, blocks away with Knight. All right, Stixie, drip, drip. All the way back to Mercedes Martinez getting stalked by Neo, a.k.a. Boa. It, it was kind of a little bit of a telltale sign of what you possibly were going to see either during the match or after. Mercedes looked strong. Another good match for her to come out. I mean, the other girl did put some moves in, but it makes Mercedes look strong. Goes dark. She's got. She ends up looking, seeing she got the the mark of from the Kung Pao cult. Um, <laughs> Mercedes is now is on the buffet menu. <laughs> Ted comes out with rice. Interrupts. No, man. no. <laughs> got, yes, General Tows. <laughs> uh. Cameron Grimes is going to talk. Ted DiBiase interrupts him. You can see it starts lighting that fuse. Cameron asks why. Ted says he sees a little bit of himself in him since he's, but since he's become rich, like you said, he's lost his way. The real million dollar body himself, L.A. Knight, the greatest non porn star to ever be with a porn star name, <laughs> says he's the missing piece. And obviously, we're going to get a battle for the ser- possible services of the Million Dollar Man. That's right, Bretzky. It's the Hardy Boys and Edge and Christian ladder match for Trish all over again. Oh, yeah. But Bretzky, what did you think of Mercedes Martinez getting the mark of the beast on her hand? Uh, I love the idea that they just fucking draw on people and, like, they mark them. I love that idea. That's hilarious to me. But also, I, I, it's, it, we, Jay, I think all the way back to one of the times that Jake was on, like, way back, like, in – like when these, when this was first starting, um, we both kind of mentioned, like, you know, we've mentioned the Yakuza games. I think this is something that the Yakuza do in Japan mm-hmm. or like they'll deliver a letter with like that kind of like, it's like a marking or something like that to like someone's house. I'm not a hundred percent sure on that. So don't, we don't come here for facts. No. Um, but 
I'm pretty sure that's a thing. So I love the idea that they're just like a fucking, <laughs> they're a fucking gang and they just want to beat the shit out of everyone. I love that. Um, yeah, Mercedes looks strong. Xander Ramirez looked good. I like that. It's kind of like progressing from Tony, uh, from, excuse me, booty storm with an I, not a Y. Um, when she, you know, she like got beat, the, got the shit beaten out of her. And then she won with the shooting star out of nowhere. She's kind of more confident now. Um, uh, I like that kind of progression, I guess, in her character, if you can call it that. But, um, you know, Mercedes looks strong. Um, what was after that? Was, was there something I, before I the I gotta get your thoughts on Robert Stone brand. Oh, this is all great. for the money. <laughs> Second rewind of the night because I had to hear. I don't know if you got what he said to Booty Storm. Uh-uh. He said, "You look like a million dollars." <laughs> oh, it was so fucking classic. And then Robert Stone came out. I was like, "Oh, no fucking way! They're getting fucking suit man stolen in with this guy. No fucking way!" He threw the money. Ah, and Aaliyah going nuts in the background, just like jumping up and down when she got like two hundred dollar bills and her oh, like so- hookers on a Friday night with a cash grab. <laughs> It just, it just, it just boosts my theory that yeah, that, that Robert Stone just like a pimp on the side because he's making no money with NXT. Well, plus um, he, he dressing a, like it now. Exactly. Yeah. It was a dead like zoot suit riot part two. Yeah, it was a dead giveaway with a full velvet suit the, the other week. Oh, yeah, and then the bedazzled glove that he uses. But uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, and then the million dollar face off. Fucking Tim Grimes gets two words out and he gets interrupted. I that was so great and just. This is a great promo from Grimes as well. This is just great promos all around. Um, I, 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 I'm getting the feeling that they're going for. Do you guys remember Sad Corbin from uh, the SRIP pod? So anyone who's listening might not know. Um, I don't remember what episode it was at all because it was probably a fucking while ago. Um, when they made Sad Corbin on the uh, Surreal After Party podcast, basically the premise of that was just, like, just go back and listen to all of them. You're missing yeah, just, out. If yeah, you just don't listen, listen to all of them. them. Every single one of them. Um, after you listen to all these and watch all of APPW Dynamites and all the pay-per-views. Yes. But um, yeah, basically, I think it was like someone in the back told Corbin that they weren't his friend and like he got sad. So I think they made this whole premise for like, oh, he everyone no, everyone's going to hate him. So he becomes a baby face. So it's like really sad. I kind of got that vibe from Grimes here where he's like, you're my hero, Ted. Like, I'm fine, Kevin Grimes. Oh, you're my hero. You know, like that kind of thing. And he's like, oh, well, you're fucking, you're, you lost focus, dude. And then he goes to LA Knight. Like, I, I feel like they're going to try to, because he was getting cheers. When he said nickel and dime and like to the moon, he was getting cheered for that. Like when he was running down LA night. So I'm feeling that they might be turning him face. Oh yeah. Um, yep. And I do actually have a little bit more of a theory. I, I, I love this. Like LA night. So good. Like when he, as soon as he came out, I was, I was like, Oh no. Like every, every one of those guys that they, they had Tony storm. They had Robert stone. I got Cameron Grimes already. And then they got LA night in here. I would love to see a Dexter Loomis interaction with, with Ted DiBiase as well. I think that would be hilarious, but you know, to get LA Knight out there, calling them incels again, always classic, calling Florida people incels. Um, he has the Kavorka, <laughs> which popped me as well. But uh, yeah, you know, million, I, I feel like they're probably going to end up doing like a, a battle between the two for the million dollar championship. Um, and like, but maybe it's like Ted DiBiase is all along just trying to test, you know, Kevin Grimes' medal. You know, it's like, oh, I'm actually going to line with this guy because he's better than you. So let's see what, like, what are you going to do about it? It kind of like, you know, like like the drunk sports dad at the barbecue, like at the Thanksgiving dinner, when you when you when you he throws you the touchdown pass and you drop it, and he's like, "What are you gonna do about it? I'm not gonna you go to the other team. Like, go go sit go sit out for go sit out for a play. What are you gonna do about it? You know, he expects you to fucking beat him up because you know, because you're, you're his son. You got to be stronger than that. So I feel like that's kind of what he's doing. Um, I guess we'll see. I think this will either be a very short face run from Grimes, where like he then he wins the match and he wins like the adulation of Million Dollar Man. And uh, he's like, fuck you guys. I can fuck, fuck the fans again. Like I was doing this all, I was, this is all a plan. Or he goes full baby face and just sad Cameron Grimes, you know? So I'm, I'm excited either way. I'm a, you, I, in case you haven't noticed, I'm a big fan of Cameron Grimes. So I'm just excited to see him on TV. I thought um, his name was fine Cameron Grimes. Yeah. Well, I was actually just going to say that this segment on a scale of one to 10 was, uh, you know, if I'm doing my math correctly, you carry the Y. I'd say this segment was a uh, fine yeah. out of 10. <laughs> that's a shirt okay. oh, that, oh that's gotta well, be a shirt well, obviously it wasn't that great it wasn't to the moon oh it surpassed the moon it went past oh, the moon God. yeah right to your anus <laughs> right well, I'm glad you're here sticks up next Frankie I'm happy Bobby to be here boys hands over her bitch and heads to the ring Kenzie trying to interview Indy uh, she's looking for Dexter Oh, uh, yes, the best part of the night comes up. Accidentally interrupts yes. Ever, Ever Rise. I almost said Ever Queer. It's just out of <laughs> fucking instinct. Ever Rise Live. 
Yes, yes. The best talk show in the world. Fucking two. Drake Maverick tells her he's over there. The most random person to be in this segment. Fucking Drake Maverick comes in. Uh, she wanders into a dark room covered in heartbroken sketches, drawings. I cried. Uh, Frankie Monet out in her very expensive. I'm, I'm not gonna. Show. I got a little. I got a little. A little Paulie in my room. According <laughs> to Wade, I'll uh, say sticks. You just stepped on me and fucked me up. Uh, he's, Frankie, in, he's, he's in for Cesar today, Mangry. He's got to do what he's got to do. Frankie Monet cut her in ring. I just said it got very Polony in my room. That's all it was when I said the po- when the photos were up. In her very expensive, ugly ass robe, according to Wade, that thick bitch, Camel Toe Monet versus Cora Jade. New signing. Uh, she buries her fat ass in Cora's yeah. face in the corner. You want to play with La Huera Loca? She screams. Chunky Spear, Glam Slam, <laughs> or the Wind. And then the Grizzled young vets cut a promo. They want MSK. Bronson Reed in the spotlight media tour after winning the North American Championship poses with cruiserweight champ Kushida. We will stop there. Great Bretsky. What are your thoughts on Kenzie trying to interview Indy while she was looking for Dexter Loomis? I think everything about that segment was great from top to bottom. Um, just because Mackenzie not giving a single fuck that Indy is clearly in distress and just continuing on with the line of questioning as like she's running away is great. Indy being like, yeah, whatever, we won, cool, we, we deserve praise, whatever. Like that was great. And then of course the greatest tag team on planet Earth, Ever Rise. Um, even Ever Rise live. I'm I'm still waiting. I'm it still- needs to be canceled. It needs to be <laughs> fucking canceled. I love that it's also nowhere to be found. Like they're doing Ever Eyes Live, but no one knows who the fuck Ever Eyes Live is. It's, it's, it's on after AEW Dark Evolution, fucking <laughs> Imperi- uh, uh, to the Moon on Saturdays on YouTube. Right after the Big Show show. <laughs> oh mm-hmm. Jesus Christ! Yeah. Uh, much to Paul White's delight. Um, but yeah, I think yeah, this was just so funny. I love the gimmick of him just going, "Oh, you, you, you want to take a swing at me? You want to take a swing at me?" Just to all the chicks in the locker room. It's so funny. It was so fun. I love that. And he's like, what the fuck? Like, I'm just looking for Dexter. And Maverick coming out confused the hell out of me. But I was like, you know what? It makes sense. I mean, they're all in a locker room together. Like, if, it makes sense that this is like a random he dude. He got nothing know. to do. Shit. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's like, man, I'm just trying not to get Alexander Wolfed out here. Like, I, I'm yeah, just, you know. Yeah, I, he's got to make that paycheck. He's got to pay for <laughs> Don't you know who his girl, his wife is? He oh, just yeah, he's got, got done cleaning the drain of Killian Dane's fucking back hair. Yeah. He's like, uh, hey, Drake, can you come in here for this segment? Oh, sure. Clean the shower. <laughs> yeah, no, I think it was funny. It's like it's a random appearance. Like, it makes sense. They're all in the same fucking building for the past however, a year and what, a, a year and a month or whatever it is. Um, yeah, then, oh, I cried. I cried. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm enough of a man to admit that, that, that men, grown men do cry. When she walked into that room and the pictures of broken hearts and, and the drawing of, of her saying loser – and him, his, the knife through his heart, it got me. Got it got Beth. Pussy. It got Beth. But coming back that, to Beth that shit, crying. That shit was better drawn than fucking Bob Ross could have drawn any of those. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I don't know if you guys follow his, his art Instagram. It's like Shaw Dog Arts on Instagram. And he's like, he's a legitimate commissioned artist. Like he, like he, commi- it, you can commission him for a drawing. Like it's great. Um, but yeah, this, this, this was so good. I and mean, just the whole storyline of, of, Indian of index is, has just been class from top to bottom. Um, yeah, then coming back from commercial, or no, then then it was uh, Frankie Monet backstage, if I'm correct. Yes, her getting ready was great too. Like, I think just like something sm- as small as that, and like putting the dog in like a vest, like that's so such so, a minute detail, but it adds so much to just like the character that she is because you yeah. can ex- you can infer a lot from that. Um, then coming back from break, Beth was crying, and that was incredible. Beth crying was that was the best that, that might have been the best cry in all of wrestling like his wrestling wrestling wrestlers crying like I think back to like the classic example of I wish you died in the womb <laughs> if you guys remember that oh, yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> greatest promo of modern times oh man um but you know this Beth crying was great and then then Wade going save save your tears Beth oi you know Frankie Monet oi oh I oi not oh why um oh why oi um yeah then Frankie Monet with the fucking what an entrance from Frankie Monet that was great um and then of course Wade saying that the dress was how much it was worth in euros popped me it's like who what like, oi that's what's so much in yours oi like, oh, it's a like, hey, 350,000 euros oi <laughs> 
she's walking in the kilometers to the ring. Oi. And I'm like, <laughs> I didn't realize she was from Canada though, so that was cool. I thought she was like from fucking. I thought they bill her from like California or, or Florida or something, but I, I guess she's from Van, from uh, I think I said Vancouver. Um, you know, she's great. I think that they actually, honestly, they might they, even before the glam slam, she was like because I haven't seen much of uh, Ty Valkyrie. Um, like I saw bits and pieces like from like clips like on Impact's like social medias and like stuff from uh, Lucha Underground and all that stuff. But uh, I know she's good. I know that she's good. I know that she can play a very good character. And as we're seeing with Frankie Monet, um, I do like that she's bringing like, you know, like the Vera Luca, like that, that stuff back. Um, but even before the glam slam, I was like, well, she reminds me a lot of Beth Phoenix, uh, just like from a look and from like the physicality um, and the stuff that she was doing and like how she was able to mix the character and fighting. Like how like she was a go, like she, re- she was going Luca. Like she was like getting crazier and crazier by the minute. Um, and then the glam slam hit and Beth was like, oh, that looks familiar. And they're kind of acknowledged it. So it kind of gives me a little bit of a thing, a little bit of a thought that maybe because Beth can wrestle still maybe down the line, you know, um, I did not have that same thought with Jade Cargill, uh, when she did the glam, the, the, the fucking jaded, whatever it was, uh, which we'll get, which we'll get to. Um, but no, I think that would be a phenomenal match because Frankie Monet, Ty Valkyrie, whatever you want to say versus Beth Phoenix, I think would be absolutely money. Um, and I'd love to see Beth back in that, back in the ring, but uh, again, in a singles match. But uh, I think I'm very happy with with the uh, tie about well, Frankie Monet's debut. Everything. I just wish the dog was there. <laughs> He'll come out from under the ring. Uh, at some... Oh yes. Oh my God, he's got to like start biting at people's ankles. <laughs> before, I, before I forget, Frankie Frankie Monet has Beth Phoenix's physique and Charlotte Flair's charisma. I think and yes, in the one that's what makes her incredible. But sticks at him. Please help me shit on the Everqueers as we start. Oh, no, 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 no. You're not allowed to. Hold on. Where's the mute button? The mute? <laughs> no, uh, I will four. leave this. You did the disrespect. For fuck's the- sakes, these guys. <laughs> Seriously, they should. They need to be put on fucking like WGN. And that might be an insult to WGN. They need to put that shit on before they put Bozo the Clown on in fucking morning. Hey, For that... Christ's sakes. Bretsky, hey. there's a reason you're going to be able to get all their mugs. Because there ain't fucking nobody buying those goddamn mugs. They are Fuck good heels. You're proving my point. You don't want to see them heels, win. They're good heels. heels. They ain't getting no goddamn time except for on Twitter on Saturday mornings. Which is why they're great. <laughs> shit. My Bresky, God. Bresky loves them because they're coming at us. And oh, I know Bresky loves them. Bresky has a circle of love for a lot of people. <laughs> My hey, God. Hey, to seal, to, to, to paraphrase Mangria, I have been right on these things. To paraphrase Mangria. <laughs> we'll see. Time will tell on a this. A dead clock is right twice a day. So let's we'll put it that way. <laughs> My God. All right. The, uh, we get Frankie Andy, Frankie Monet, my God, I have never seen a longer freaking robe, a wrestling robe in my life until freaking Tuesday night, bloody Christmas. And she she said uh, La Vera Loca in Impact, and I believe if I'm right, Vera Loca is her clothing brand. She has her own clothing brand now, which we see some, some wrestlers actually wear them. I always thought when I heard that her contract was done with Impact, if AEW had any goddamn sense of smart, you back up a tr- Brinks truck and you offer double hilarious. Of what WWE was going to offer her because she right off the bat could give you at least a year of a run. Again, you could do you could do half a year to a year of just her feuding with the good doctor, D M D. But I mean. We- you kind of probably be a husband. Husband on her had a nice little rock in Lucha Underground when he was John's John Impact, but it was. Oh, he was. We're having some <laughs> technical difficulties here, buddy. Sticks just frozen, just the um, shocked look. You're fr- <laughs> the, the Frankie Monet's ass just just wait, wait. mesmerized him. <laughs> it shocked me. <laughs> but we still have an issue. I do appreciate the fact that uh, Cora's face got lost. Uh, yeah, she's gonna be good. 
Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited for uh, more Frankie Monet matches because this is this is just like a small exhibition and it was still good. Uh, up next, the Imperium video package. They do acknowledge Alexander Wolf's weakness. Walter dictator like speaks about the tag team Eichner and Barthel. They're gonna take over. Yada yada yada. Oi. North Oi. American champion Bronson Reed out. 14 years promo interrupted by the Brown Order. This is when Bretsky went from six to midnight. I did. You got a telenovela story, Bronson. <laughs> Santos wants the North American championship. What about Canada? Canada doesn't count, Santos says. <laughs> I'm going to take what's mine, Santos also says. Brown order, try to attack, but MSK for the save. Six-man tag for show next week. Regal says Kyle O'Reilly versus Pete Dunn versus Gargano to determine new number one contender for the NXT title. We are also going to get MSK versus the Brown Order for the Tag Team Championships. Sticks, what did you think about all that shit? I just vomited. <laughs> um, obviously, the three, the, the triple threat for the number one contender match going to be awesome. I mean, I thought the one thing that we actually missed from Tuesday was – we had, I don't know if you want to call Indy this, but we didn't get any of the way. And I was, I was kind of a little bit, I was kind of a little bit disappointed because the only thing we had was Indy. Yeah. That was it. We didn't get anything from Johnny. I thought, I thought after they announced that, that triple threat match, I thought if Johnny and Austin would have came in kind of like a repeat of, of what happened last week. And if they would have attacked uh cross after the match, I thought that could have been set in, a good tone going into next week, but I, I, I want to see Johnny, Johnny and cross because just the promos leading up to, to in your house will be so good. I mean, the ways, the ways good anyway, but just the promos leading up to that would be so good. What are your thoughts on uh, Bronson Reed, the new North American champion? I'm happy for him. I mean, 14 years. I, I think, uh, I think it would have been pretty neat if they, if uh, uh, Brown Order maybe would have been like, "Hey, we, we could we could use somebody like you." No, he's we not could, brown. We could get. We could have. He's sort of brown. He's only. Hey, but he's he, not. He, pay, he's not pale white though. He's Aussie he's not pale brown. White, though. Though. He's Aussie brown. It's, it's from Wait, the, it's from being in the sun all day. That's still brown, right? You you <laughs> you just said it yourself. That's brown. You said yeah. it's that Aussie brown. So that's still brown. Brownson. Brownson. Brown. Plus we're brown. Cultured. Brownson. Cultured. Could could be the cultured or, order, but I it was good. I think if we get him and uh, fuck, I for, his name is escaping me, but the leader of the Brown Order, I think they would put on Santos. a good match. He does a good he, Santos. Santos puts on good matches just himself, but I mean him and Bronson, it would be good. And the tag team match that we're gonna get next week that that'll be good. It'll be interesting to see if they still want to ride with msk going forward or if maybe this is kind of a wave to get brown order covered and draped in gold bretsky your thoughts on north american champion bronson reed oi uh oi i i yeah I, I i was very happy with, with i think that brown order i think santos had the promo of of the night of the week absolutely potentially of the last month this was a this might this might have been santos's best promo because I love this, everything about his promo. Because when Bronson was talking, like, chase your dreams, yay, you know, like all that stuff, it's like, okay, like, we've seen this. Like, this is a rinse and repeat, you know, like, babyface beats the asshole heel. He wins the title. And he's like, you can do it if you believe in yourself. You know, never give up. I had doubters. You know, it's like, okay, like, good, good, decent enough promo. Like, you're getting the inflections right, but like, oh, they're going to have a colossal mountain. Like, that was a good line. But like, oh, and I was like, okay, we've seen this. Then Santos came out and he's like, oh, the, as soon as he started with the telenovela story, like I knew it was going to be good. He, him running it down of like, I can't relate to you. Like the fucking, I am the business. Like I am this business. Like I have a legacy. He's like, that's fucking, it's, it, it was such a great line from Santos. This is just a great, a bunch of great lines. He runs um, the bingo. Oi. Oh, I love, I will buy a, a I run the bingo. Oi t-shirt <laughs> if they come out with that. Uh, <laughs> but, um, but you yeah, know, I, I, with it. You know, yeah. <laughs> uh i i run the mess hall oi um but uh i i i love 
the first problem with that money is that yeah, I, when I think North America, I think can I think uh, the United States and Mexico. I, I immediately thought like, oh, fucking missed out on Canada. <laughs> and that fucking I oh, and he said, what about Canada? Oh, Canada doesn't exist. They don't count. We talked about this. I that was my re- that was my second rewind of the night. That was incredible. I died at that. That I that was that popped me. But no, this was great. I also the, a very small thing they did. It's all about the small things. They did not get in the ring right away. A lot of times when like you'll interrupt a promo, they'll be like, come down the ramp, talk then get in the ring in the front. They walked around, you know, like to assert their dominance, almost like we're sharks and like we're sharks in the water, which I really liked the way kind of the, like, the small thing like that. But no, this was a phenomenal program from Santos. Um, and it really sets up like he is again, like now that we're getting fans back, it's easy when there's no fans to kind of establish who's a heel and who's a face. Cause you can have your online people on Twitter who were like the smart like smart fans are like, oh, I love Johnny, or like us, like, oh, like we love Johnny Gargano. We think he's great. I'm happy when I see Johnny Gargano on my TV screen because I just, you know, we, we're smart too. And, you know, it's like, oh, he's hilarious. But if I'm like a casual fan, I'm kind of tuning in. There's no fans really. And they kind of, you can pipe in booze. You can kind of like put stuff up. It's like, okay, this guy's an asshole. I don't like this guy. So when now that we're getting back to the period where we're going to have fans back more than just like the five people they have in the CWC, it's important for them to kind of distinguish people as why should you hate this guy we're kind of getting back to things like santos were getting cheers a little bit like people like santos people like legato but this was a very prickish promo from santos like listen you've worked for this cool i don't work for shit like i am the fucking i i am the emperor of lucha libre like i like oi this is my shit like you you would never make it in my world kind of thing um and then msk i like the also i like the dynamic with msk because they don't give a fuck who they're teaming with. Basically, they're just like they just hate Legato. <laughs> like they they'll, they'll team with anyone in the world as long as they can take on Legato, which I think is hilarious. Um, but they, they, is... they might not team with Cynic. So let's just put that. Oh yeah, well, yeah. I mean, fuck Cynic. Fuck, fuck that Cynic. Guy. Yeah, Cynic David sucks. Arquette. Fuck that guy. David Arquette. Run they team there. with Arquette before Cynic. <laughs> oh man. Um. But yeah, I think this is a very a, a phenomenal segment. Other than the start, I like how he just called him out on his bullshit of like, yeah, we hear this all the time, dude. Like, shut the fuck up. Um. Yeah, I'm excited for the match. I'm excited for the tag title match. I hope Legato wins because um, I do think MSK still needs a little bit of more. I mean, they're very good, but I feel like they kind of rushed it on them as much as happy as I want to see, as happy as I was to see them win it. It was kind of like a little bit of like because you know obviously you know Birch got hurt and they had to vacate the titles and they're like all right fine we'll put this new team on it. I don't know if that was the plan all the way, but uh, I feel like Legato deserves it from the work they've been doing and from the growth that Wild and Mendoza have been doing as a team. I think they deserve it. But um, yeah, then we find out about the triple threat. I am very excited for the triple threat. I do have a feeling that this will lead into the Fish and O'Reilly storyline because who in that match has as some kind of thing going on with Bobby Fish? Everyone but Gargano. You know, mm-hmm. Fish could easily come out and be like, you know, fuck you. You attacked me in, like last week. I'm going to make sure you don't win the title. But then it fucks up O'Reilly and O'Reilly's like, what the fuck are you doing out here? And then Johnny just swoops in for the win. Because uh, I can't see Dunn going on right now. I can't see Dunn going to a feud with Cross right now. Johnny's the easy one because it could be like a one-off thing. They had the the beef from the past. That makes the most sense to me. And I don't really want to see O'Reilly in another match for the title right now. Um, so I think Johnny makes the most sense. But I think this can very easily set up a lot of stuff with Bobby Fish. Maybe Roddy. Maybe Cole. I don't know. Um, so I'm, but that's going to be a banger. That'll be free money if I've ever seen it. Plus, if uh, Garg- it kind of gives an explanation why they took the North American Championship off of Johnny so he can move yeah. on. And can exactly. you imagine the promos Ooh. between the way if Johnny Gargano was able to be the first person to defeat Karrion oh, Cross oh, and become oh, NXT oh, champion? Oh, so good. Oh, man. You'll never hear the end of it. I, can't, I cannot Just... wait to see what happens next week. It's going to be great. But now we have reached the main event of the night. NXT champion Karrion Cross versus Finn Balor 2. Uh, Balor aiming for Cross's leg. Uh, we get a commercial picture in picture. Balor gives Cross an ass slap during this commercial picture in picture. After the next game's in the ring, uh, Cross sets his sights on an arm bar, but Finn gets out of it, puts a modified STF, then switches up attack to Cross's left arm. Cross rips off the front of his skirt and throws it towards the crowd. Finn, extremely aggressive in this match. Cross now focuses attack on Balor's spine. Finn trapped Cross in apron, attacking him, giving Finley a boner in the back. Picture in picture, Cross 
regathers himself, chatting with Scarlet about clapping cheeks later. I was drunk during these notes. Really? <laughs> you? You drunk no. during notes? Wow. Finn attacks, fight back in the ring, Cross regains control. Cross turns a double stomp attack from Finn into the cross jacket. Incredible. I love that. Cross pounds Finn's head against the plexiglass. Razor's edge like toss into it. Balor tries his best to regain control, but that bald killer, no selling everything. Right back up to his feet every time. Uh, Cross delivers elbows to the back of Balor's head. Ref doesn't have a problem with that, but Finn starts to do it. And then the ref's like, hey, hey, hey what's going on here? What's going on here? Uh, Finn so close to submitting Cross in the triangle, but Cross power bombs out of it. Cross wins with the Cross jacket. Finn passed out. It's free money mania, baby. Wow. This went 10 minutes over. Gretzky wax poetic on the main event of NXT. Uh, third week in a row, by the way, they've gone 10 minutes over. Yeah. Um, it's and like I'm guessing, I'm guessing oh, they're yeah. going to do it again next week. I'm not going to lie with the fucking tag title match, which I assume either that or the triple threats main eventing. So I think the triple threat probably. Yeah. yeah they'll probably, it, uh, they're going to be one or they're going to be one and last. They're going to be the first and last either yep. in some order. Um, you know, this was fun. I, it was different from their first match, which I liked because it makes sense. Cause now Finn knows what to expect going against cross. He's been in the fucking match with him. So Finn was able to counter shit, which I liked. And Finn had, Finn had great counters, but I think that there's not a singular better count, counter wrestler in the business right now than Karrion Cross, Because the way that he can counter shit into the cross jacket, and even just in general, but the way he can counter into the cross jacket, at least like in terms of a counter into a submission or a finisher, that he, it's just smooth. It's seamless. It's so good. Like Cross is a star. Cross is absolutely a star because he has the presence he has the uh, appearance. He has Scarlet. He, and also, he's in, in, not 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 trying to like sound like I don't like. Oh, I ever like. Oh, like I'm, I'm I don't like short wrestlers. But he's a like a giant among Garganos, especially in NXT. You know, and there's nothing nothing against Gargano, but he because of the height and the build, like he's almost like he's two sixty five or whatever, and Finn's one ninety. That's you the know. kind of that's kind of the thing that he could hold against NXT is a lot of their stars are barely six feet but most of them are six feet and under and cross is just he's he's literally that guy that there's reasons why they're talking like you don't know if he's gonna like this match i thought if he would have lost he was going to the main card we would have seen him on friday or next monday yeah i think that's the biggest the one i think i said this a while ago when darby won the tnt title um, the, it, the one saving grace about that, because like, I don't mind the shorter wrestlers, like whatever, like, I, like obviously like they all put on good shows. Like they, you know, you can believe them. Um, it's, it's not, but they're all jacked. Like Gargano looks like he could kill me if you really wanted to, you know, despite kill being like, despite being like five foot change, you know, like he, he's shredded. Then, you know, then you have like, guys like Darby Allen who like aren't as shredded, but that, like that, I feel like that kind of makes it more believable. Cause like, you know, this, yeah, this guy's like, like five, eight, whatever it is. But you know, I'm sure he's not. Be- could you beat up Drake Maverick? Probably not. <laughs> I, 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 to tell you, to be honest, I might put some money on Bretzky, but I'm going to bet the farm on fucking Drake. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I could. I don't know if I could beat Drake Maverick. Cause that dude, I mean, they, he's one of the guys that he's one of the boys at the cement factory. So I'm kind of scared. It, it might go to a time limit draw. Yeah, he, he's, he's one of these, he's working out with guys like Moose and EC3. So I'm, I'm not, I'm, yeah. I'm not touching that. Um, <laughs> yeah. But um, by the way, Moose greatest promo in the business right now. But um, I I do think that uh, <laughs> I, I think this was a good match. I, I think that Cross being that guy, you know, he is that bitch. Um, to, to steal a phrase, uh, <laughs> um, you know, he he looks like it makes sense why he fucking is undefeated. Because who, who's who's gonna beat him? Like, yeah, Johnny shredded. All these guys are shredded. Finn is jacked as shit. But he's fucking almost a hundred pounds heavier than you, and he's. Like almost looks like he's a foot taller than you. And Finn's I don't know. Could he? Guys. Could he? Could he survive a tsunami? Oi, oi. <laughs> I don't know if he could. Yeah, Bronson's again one of those other guys who's like a big guy in that that locker room. But um, you know, this was fun. I mean, Cross didn't no sell to the point where it's like, okay, he's just a no sell. But he no sold enough and at the right moments to where it was like, oh shit! Like how the f- like when he did the when he got it from the dive. It's like, oh fuck! Like, how do you get up from that? Like, yeah, then the he would get expression on yeah. Finn's face. Yeah, Finn like, literally yes. was like, "Oh shit, I'm fucked." <laughs> yeah, like when he put his hand on his shoulder. Oh, f- like, 
And they, you know, soldiers to the extent where it's like, oh shit, like he's a tough motherfucker. But then like there were points where like Finn would get him down, like it makes sense. Like, okay, like, he can't no sell all this shit. Um, you know, this was fun. It was different enough in the first match. You kind of, you know, I love what they do. I love when they do like the arms, like when they drop the arm. I do wish they did it more like the old school version where they do the three arm drops. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I still liked it. I still, I also like how Cross held the ref's hand to get out of it, and the ref's like, that was awesome. Like that was that was freaking awesome. Yeah, that was great. Um, but this was fun, and I think Cross winning obviously makes sense. Obviously, I don't know what's next for Finn here. But um, I'm very interested to see. Apparently, there's rumors he might go back to Maine, which I don't know. I mean, I feel like it's probably for the best because he's. I want him to face Walter. Let's get the Walter match. Oh, out yeah, of that's fair. Yeah, we true. had that. They were well, teasing that yeah. before before the pandemic hit. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, we we didn't know if he was gonna fly over there and he was just gonna show up, or if Walter was gonna come over here. And then all of a sudden, you know, COVID from the top rope hit us. <laughs> uh, yeah, COVID. Yeah, COVID from the top with the Joey Janela elbow drop, but. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, this was uh, this was fun. Definitely get the Walter match out of the way. But I, I don't know. I kind of wouldn't mind seeing you know Finn back on main. I feel like Finn versus a guy like Finn and Finn versus Drew like on Raw would be great. Finn versus Balor, um, Finn not versus Balor. Finn versus Roman with the new character changes would be great. Um, and him, him and Seth again. Like these are matches we've seen, but like I think would be fun. Um, I feel like it would it would make. I feel like they know how to use him again now. He's coming off the momentum from because you forget he was the first ever Universal Champion. They did have the plans for him, then he got hurt. So they kind of do want to book him right. It just kind of got lost in the shuffle after the injury. So I feel like you'd do well. Uh, I just, this is Cross's moment. Cross is an absolute star. He's a stud. He has the look. He has the gimmick. He has the intensity. He has the manager. He has the skill in the ring. Um, and I, I'm excited to see where he goes, but um, I don't see him losing that thing anytime soon. Anytime soon. Sticks, Adam, your thoughts on the main events of NXT? This, this was, I thought, match of the week. From both from from just the two shows, I mean, obviously we were not. It probably was better. It was probably one of the better matches that than what Raw put on. But this was well deserved of the main event, and I I just liked it. Like Bretzky has said, it, Cross knew when to no sell. I, I, he knew the moments to do that, and then just the look on Finn's face, and it just seemed like whenever Finn was getting enough momentum, Cross was just there to to snatch it. And it's it's well deserved that Cross is going to continue, and it's just it'll be interesting to see who Cross will face it in your house, and then where do we get where where does Finn go? I mean, does he does he want to go to the raw? Does he want to go back to the main roster, or is he just like, nah, I'm good down here in NXT. I'll take whatever you're going to give me, and I just want to stay here. So it's it was it was a good match, and it was a good way to end the show. Well, gentlemen, it's. Friday night, uh, and you know what that means. Smackdown. It means to go. It means yeah, check in with the tribal chief. <laughs> uh, but however, this night AEW Dynamite was on. A lot of fans and next in week. attendance. And next there week, yeah, and next a, week. A lot of fans in attendance. We get we kick off the night with Caesar Banani versus Darby Allen. Caesar gains upper hand quickly <laughs> due to Darby take up ribs. What? The APBW AEW partnership is strong. Yeah. Yeah, get the, get the yeah. reigning defending decent champion against Darby Allen. Damn. Uh, just manhandling Darby. Don't ever count out Lincoln Park, though, because that skeleton came back and won <laughs> with the coffin drop. Grandpa Sting in ring as Darby grabs a mic and calls out Ethan and Scorpio. Ethan and Scorpio come out in their best 80s villain button ups, won't fight on free TV. And then Caesar. The librarian, Ziggler's brother, JD, the Hilda, wingman, the Ethan wingman, Page, and Scorpio <laughs> Sky all jump them. Dark Order for the save. Is Dark Order the arena security? They always save everybody. Uh, Bretsky, what did you think of the kickoff to AEW Dynamite? I have a question. Why is Cesar Bononi six now six and nine? Why is he not win? Why is he not undefeated? He's the the same thing we just talked about of. Kyrie Cross being a big guy in a, in a relatively small wrestling company in terms of size. This is six, 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 a former fucking tight end for the Brazilian fo- American football team. Because the best booker on the fucking face of the earth don't know how to book his fucking talent. Oh, we got to talk about that. Oh, we got to talk about that. You want to talk about that first? Oh, let's talk about that first. I, let's talk okay. about that first. Okay, we're talking about that first. Wait, 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 wait. Just, just oh, finish oh, this oh. match. Just finish the match. Okay. Oh. So 
I don't get why they're not pushing Cesar Bononi to be like, I don't know, a guy who can win and is not having a losing record because the dude is massive. So why the fuck are you wasting him like that? That's and especially on having, I don't remember last time he was on TV to have him be six and eight from dark. That's absolutely idiotic, idiotic. And it's so stupid. The guys, if you just look at the guy, you're like, oh shit, that guy can kill me. So why is he six and eight now? Six and nine stupid booking. Uh, but I expected that um, the match was, ugh. and it was, it wasn't terrible. It wasn't atrocious, but it was nowhere near good. I think it was alleviated. I think a lot of AW gets a lot of, you can cut a lot of slack for the go home for this one because the fans were back. Oh, for, so I got kinda, no fucking slack. No, after I'm not for that chump motherfucker. What he said on Twitter before. Hold on. Oh, oh yeah. Hold hold on. On. Hold on. In terms, in terms of just, in terms of just like the performances, everything just felt better because you know, fans were back and it was cool. But after I saw this, you know, it was like, Ugh. but, um, you know, it was, yeah. And why, why are Scorpio sky and Ethan page a tag team? <laughs> and why are they getting this massive match? Right? I get Scorpio sky. I've said this time and time again, could be a world champion. I've got opinions on that too. I'm very happy that now, this is great. Cause we get other people opinions on how terrible this fucking decision is. You have enough tag teams in your, in your division. It's not just us people. It's not it's, just, yeah. us. it's every, yeah. <laughs> they have enough tag teams in your division even with scu gone ethan page i don't know much about him you know sticks you might know more about him coming from impact um but i don't know much about him but all of a sudden you know he, he came in with the whatever fucking brass ring match whatever it was i believe um the and now he's match <laughs> the the golden bootio for me yeah, the they, they found it um yeah and i don't know why they're a tag team and then it's like oh you don't you, you don't want us to we don't we're not going to wrestle in our fancies I'm like why well, you just call it just call it like fancy just call it suit just call it button downs um i did like though i'll give i'll give the AEW marks credit i'll give the fans and attendance credit um, don't do that me. don't do that i'll give them enough yeah. credit i'll give them the credit don't to the that. point to don't the do point that. i know hear me out they at least boo the heels and cheer the faces they, at least, because they were booing Sky and Page. At yeah, least they then were they're, doing then that. they're slurping them on Twitter. It, it, exactly. It, 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 all I'm saying, though, is like if I'm a casual fan, again, the whole casual fan thing, I don't give a fuck what you do on Twitter. I mean, I do. But, I, you know, do whatever you do on Twitter. Like, if I'm just kind of scrolling through their channels and I see this and it's like Scorpio and Ethan come out, which shouldn't be a thing, but I don't know any better because I'm a casual fan, and I hear raucous boos, I'm like, okay, I guess these guys suck. So, at least... To for, for a casual standpoint, that's okay. Like I'm fine. Right, because but, Tony Khan comes out there and tells him who the boo. Oh yeah. But just don't don't say shit. Word. Don't don't yeah. say the s word. Yeah. Um. But yeah, no. This was ugh, this was, the first two segments were the worst possible way they could have started off the fucking first ever show back with fans. Um. But yeah, this was ugh. Cesar Bononi should not be being wasted like this. Have fucking J D Drake or someone go in there. Whatever one of the fucking wingmen fuck toys go in. And now have that one of them take the pin, but six and nine for the guy who looks like that, absolute waste, absolute waste. Well, sticks, it's not confidence, it's all ego. Uh, what were your thoughts on the kickoff match to tonight's dynamite? By the way, send all your hate mail to Tony Skeets at AEW.com. No, at, at care, hotmail. Care, of, care of tripods, a, the APHO tripod sessions. <laughs> <laughs> um, the only thing I took from this was that. I forgot who said it, but I said, but he said the wingmen are waxed, vaxxed, and ready for white boy summer. <laughs> and that's the only thing I remember from the match. Otherwise, fuck that match. This match is stupid. Let us address Tony Skeets and his controversial fuck. Controversial. Boy. Controversial. Fuck boy. Controversial. On, <laughs> on Twitter that lit the fire under the wrestling Twitter world. Bretsky, go ahead and wax poetic on his bullshit. Okay, so basically, if anyone doesn't know, then um, basically, so WWE has the new president of opera, president like for the board. His name is Nick Khan, which I, is ironic. Um, but you know, his name is Nick Khan. Like I, I've looked, I've looked a lot into the guys because I um, actually follow um, Stephanie McMahon on LinkedIn because she always actually posts a lot of good stuff on LinkedIn. And like I'll look, like she was like posting about the guy and like he has a lot of really good credentials. Um, so like I'm, I'm like yeah i'm all for it dude like go go ahead like i, I don't really deal with you on a day-to-day basis that like, you're not cutting promos on my show on the shows that i'm watching like go ahead if you're good for business you're good for business um so he the news broke a couple of days ago that a not aw that um new japan for wrestling and wwe apparently were in talks of a potential partnership or working together or something like that and uh, nick khan was at the head of those 
talks. Um, yo, Mangria, uh, Cesar says, check your phone and send the link. I'll be home in 10 minutes. Woo, all right. We well, need we, oh, actually another opinion. Speed through this thing because I, I, I yep. got an hour left here. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so basically, yeah. So NJPW and WB are apparently um, – were or, or in WB were kind of wooden talks. Um, and so that's awesome. That's awesome for wrestling. And there's a lot of, been, there's been a lot of teasers on Twitter, like Bronson Reed and Jeff Cobb were teasing stuff. Um, you know, all these guys, I think Drew McIntyre actually today or yesterday posted a tweet, kind of like what Becky did for WrestleMania, but it said, it spelled out Okada, which was really cool. Um, anyway, if you don't know, then NJPW is kind of been having a work on and off working relationship with AEW. Cause I mean, we saw the I mean, Moxley is the, IWGP US champ. Um, Rocky Romero was on dark last time. You know, they've had, they've had some, you know, a lot of that kind of interaction. So Tony Khan cuts a promo with Tony Schiavone um, on Twitter and on Instagram, her social media before dynamite on Friday. And he has his sunglasses crooked. He looks like he just came out, came back from snorting Coke off a, off, you know, a, a trans hooker's ass and comes in, you know, Tony Skeets is sick. So lovely. So uh, lovingly named him in our chat one day. Um, and he's saying, I'm the forbidden door. Basically, what he said is, Nick, wow, you've been talking to, to NJBW, Nick, on for, for two months. You, you, yeah, you sure have gotten a lot done with the, a lot done there because the last two weeks we've had all these guys on our show. I'm the better con in the wrestling business. And I know you want me to keep this short, Mangria, so I'll do my very darndest to keep this short. But again, and I, I, do, I bring this perspective a lot on the podcast because I, I'm very fortunate to be afforded the ability to. You must be uh, fucking no, fuck not Nick. You must be the biggest retard in the fucking universe if you think that a business deal between a major corporation, a publicly traded corporation, if, if that's gonna be done in two weeks, whoa, good for you. You got Rocky Romero on your TV show because fucking he's good friends with the with the Good Brothers. Good for you. You know, yeah, good for you. John Mox is IWGP US champion. Cool. If you to to it's sad because. From the start of AEW, I at the beginning, I respected Tony Khan for the reason being this. He's living all of our dreams. He was a lifelong wrestling fan. He has the capital, and he now has a wrestling promotion that's not WWE, where he can just do whatever he wants. He can, he can, he's doing Fantasy Booker that we always do in real life. And I'm like, holy shit, that's awesome. Like, mad props to the dude. Like, you, you did it. You're doing what we, all of us want to do. But we're watching the deterioration and just the ego of this man just go so sky high because he has these fucking assholes on Twitter who are like, Tony Khan can do no wrong. Uh, and Tony Khan, is, he's going to change the world. Oh, uh. yeah. As the lovely sticks is doing now, <laughs> you know, doing all that. And so I don't blame him. Like my biggest thing for anything I do in life is if I'm doing it and I'm putting in the work, I want respect in return. You know, like, if I'm working on a project for a class, like a presentation and I get us an A, I want you to say, thank you. You know, like, I want to at least be like, Hey, you know, like Nick, don't take my word for granted. Like I helped us get an A on this presentation, you know, as a group project, something like that. So it makes sense. You want the respect of your peers, but he's taken the, like this, this adulation and Id- idolizing that these AEW fans on Twitter do. And it's gone all to his head. And it's so sad to see yeah. because he said from the beginning, I'm not going to be commenting on shit. Like I'm just going to be in the back. But he's gotten promos now. He's doing this shit, talking about WWE. And I, I saw some comments. I'm agree. You mentioned that you might have comments that people had on Twitter about this, but like he is pulling a Bischoff. And Bischoff, as good as a booker as he was for the for, you know for the 83 weeks, ultimately taking those direct shots at WWE sank WCW. You know, and just being so obsessed with that. If you think that an actual good business deal, especially a guy like Nick Khan, who's like, I just want to be careful here. Like, we're good. You know, like, we want to make sure that we work out the logistics. Especially a guy like Gato, too. Like, who's not going to fucking have Vince do, like, fucking, you know, Nakamura, all of his guys, you know? Like, he's going to make sure they're actually booked right and, like, they can kind of you know, work, work out a partnership. If you don't think that, it's, that, that, if you think that two months is a long time for that to work, then you are the biggest fucking idiot. It's so clear that he has no business experience, no experience in anything that all the money is from his dad and he can't even run his fucking soccer team properly. You know, this fucking guy, he comes out, he's like, oh, I'm the better con. Uh, shut the fuck up. You have no, it's, it's sad. And I, I hate to be so critical on AEW, but they make it so easy to be critical of them. And I it also I hate it because it makes WWE look so much better than it actually is. Because you're just an idiot. This is the 
one of this is maybe the stupidest thing that I have seen from AEW that they've done in the fucking two years and however many months they've been in existence. This promo was stupid. It was inane. It was idiotic and it will sink the company. That is why they will not last. Maybe they won't even last the full five year deal. I don't know, but this was so stupid. You think that just cause you had a NJPW wrestlers on your show for two weeks because they're friends with you guys that are your EVPs means that you have this great partnership. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. I don't know the inner workings of those, of those details, but to then call out another company because Oh, how dare. Oh, they're going to try to put us out. Oh, they, this because they're scared of AEW. Do oh. so you think that a major corporation like them is not going to want to do the best they can to work with other companies? Oh, we've mentioned this before. They've worked with Evolve. They've worked with Progress, WXW, fucking CZW. All of these companies, they, they do work with them. NJPW is a big target for them. And they're, they're getting on track with NJPW World and NJPW in California and the dojos. So they're obviously making waves. Why wouldn't they want to partner with them? Any company in the world will try to work it out with a partnership or a merger, whatever it is, even if they're already with another company. So fucking stay in your lane, Tony Khan. Let daddy write your checks for you and shut your mouth. Don't ever come on my fucking screen again. Stick season on impact more than I do, but just stay in your lane. Get your little awards from Meltzer as he's, as he gets out from underneath your table and just stay in your lane. Shut the fuck up and don't start talking about things that you have no idea about because I'm a fucking... I guess technically a junior, I'm a sophomore in college and I have more business experience in my pinky finger than you have in your fucking life. Fucking absolute asshole. Nothing about this guy is likable. Uh, it, it, it's, it's fascinating to me that this guy could be allowed to, to, to live out every one of our dreams. That this is the guy that, that was destined to, to change the world and revolutionize wrestling industry. This is your guy. This is the guy that's, that's going to change the wrestling landscape. Ab, go fuck yourself, Tony Khan, and your fucking pencil neck fucking look, looking ass you know skating in your chicago bulls 1996 t-shirts go fuck yourself fuck that entire goddamn company except for mjf and uh the pinnacle as well as you know platinum max caster and the acclaimed because everyone loves the acclaimed um that's what a fucking terrible terrible display of business businessmanship of fucking sportsmanship e- e- absolute idiot absolute fucking retard that tony khan is i i i can't get my head i cannot wrap my head around how fucking stupid it is i know you want me to go short angry <laughs> but it's just i i can't from a wrestling fan's perspective and a business perspective i can't i can't wrap my head around how this guy can be in charge of anything more than the local mcdonald's let me let me write down the time here for uh nomination for rant of the year on the tripod <laughs> whoa, uh, whoa, anytime whoa, they mention whoa, whoa. Uh, new japan pro wrestling and WWE relationship, the image that pops into my head is always Hulk Hogan doing the Hurricane Rada to Great Muda back in 1993. <laughs> that's what I think of it because that's the only connection I see like, between them. But like, you, don't, on, see, on, you don't see on, any, on. you don't see anything from WWE to AEW. You don't like, WWE at least in the WCW days. Because they don't they, see him as a threat. Exactly. But like, this is exactly what's good. <laughs> this is exactly what it is. Exactly. Like they had the fucking like parodies. They had like fake Diesel, fake. You don't have fake Dean Ambrose coming out like in the Royal Rumble. They don't give us flying fuck. So why are you trying to start something when you say, "Oh, we're not gonna, we're not gonna, you know, come compete with them. We're not competition." You fucking think you are? Jesus, go ahead, Sticks. This is fucking well, bullshit. Well, Sticks Adam gets all the credit for Tony Skeets, by the way. Yes. But yeah, Sticks Adam, what are your thoughts on this bullshit uh, promo that TK did? <laughs> I want to start off with this. If you're New Japan, are you going to want a team with a company that's had a pretty good working relationship with USA Network, NBC Universal, and now with Fox or with a company that I literally look at as getting downsized that's going to be going from TNT oh, yeah. to fucking TBS in 20 They'd rather have the NHL playoffs, which I would rather watch. I mean, seriously, if you, you this fucking guy, and to tell you the truth, let me just be crystal clear honest. I think Impact has got the better end of that. New Japan deal because they had Finn Juice. AEW, the, the bigger name person they had was Kenta. And that was like, what, five months ago? This guy woke up, has his daddy's black credit card, is signing any wrestler that he wants. It's like, it's like any one of us running a franchise on Madden football. We're going out there, we're trying to freaking sign on these guys, but let's just wait when you have to end up having to fire some of these people. This guy is not, this guy is more of a friend and he has an actual boss, and he does whatever he can to rock, to kick his, to rock his socks, and make him look big. First off, dude, WWE doesn't even look at you as a threat. And if they did, if they did, they would probably talk to Fox like, "Hey, can we run SmackDown on like Wednesdays for like a month straight?" 
and then they would pack those shows so tight that your AEW trolls couldn't freaking be able to talk because the, their foots would be so with their they'd be so pissed that they were getting destroyed. This is just a joke. This guy is literally lucky because his dad has so owns so many teams and he's making so much money off that. This guy is, is I, I I truly hope that they don't make it three years. And I really hope Vince McMahon, I hope I really hope Dave Meltzer has to bite his tongue when he has to send out that tweet that says WWE has bought AEW wrestling. Mm-hmm. Because that guy will literally probably be like, this is the worst day of my life. And it will be the best day in all of our lives. Because this guy is slurping what Tony Khan is putting out there. And he is so far up the, the young bucks and the elite's asses that it, it literally shows. This is not a, he is not a journalist and Tony Khan is not even a fucking owner. This guy will not make any hard business decisions. He is, he's been so lucky that we've, that all wrestling fans have looked for something different. This is what it's come down to. We wanted something different. We got it, but then Tony Khan is literally fucking it up. He said he was going to be something different than when you're, you were going to be a totally different thing than what WWE is. Motherfucker. You are following a blueprint, let alone you are shitting on the blueprint that WWE has done. And this is just, this guy to be able to stand there with his two dollar fucking gas station glasses, looking like he did blow off a fucking Nyla Rose's ass crack, talking about how great of a freaking job that he's doing and how there will only be one con. Yeah, buddy. In five years, there will be only one con, and it ain't gonna be your punk ass. You'll be back to filing papers for your daddy in the Jacksonville Jaguars fucking front office. This guy needs to go away. He literally needs to be off stage. The forbidden door. What the fuck ever. I really wish that, that door would get blown off the hinges, destroy the door, and let us be a fucking open doorway. This guy needs to go away. And that's all I got. I'm just, I'm so fucking pissed on this. this is so Up horrible. next, Paul White comes out for the weigh-in. A go-go with the factory. Uh, QT running his mouth. Paul attempts to put them in their place. He'll turn in three, two. What? No, that doesn't happen. <laughs> Cody surrounded by honky entourage and playing the role of Brandy Rhodes, Red Velvet. Cody stripped <laughs> off his racing fire suit and gets on the scale. Paul struggles to operate scale. He's 218. Fireworks going off constantly. Tony uses wardrobe budget on finest illegal imports from Mexico. Uh, Gogo on scale. Uh, Union Jack Choney's. He weighs in at 219. QT runs his mouth again, says a Gogo will be victorious. Berates crowd. A Gogo makes jerk off motion to the hillbilly crowd. Was that fan holding aside the Union Jack flag? He was dressed in a ref shirt. Was. <laughs> Cody thanks Paul and crowd, throws his stank clothes in the crowd. Stadium stampede, vignette. Some men were born to be buried, Sean Spears says at the end. Uh, P2H and Christian brawling backstage. Uh, Sticks, what are your thoughts on the weigh-in? The weigh-in is literally the reason why AEW is going to fucking dis- be destroyed. How many fucking people do you need a goddamn entourage to come to a fucking weigh-in? That's all I got. Uh, stadium stampede thoughts the vignette looking forward to it i mean this is going to be good outside that, that's all i got bretsky weigh in um two uh two things quick um one actually yeah i looked at the definition of boring and webster uh, mary webster and this came up um yeah I, I i still hold by my point of this should be at double or nothing they should have saved qt versus cody and then they should have had a go-go versus dustin yeah. um i still stand by that point and, uh, you know, I agree with Sticks. I mean, this just took so long. This, why was, if again, casual fan standpoint, this is the beginning of the show. I just finished watching SmackDown. I'm a casual fan. I'm like, oh, that's right. AEW's on, a, this thing AEW's on like at 10 o'clock. I can finish SmackDown, go check it out. This, I'm, I would be put to sleep. This should have been like the second to last thing they did, like, or right, right before the tag match main event. Cause like this, this just sucked. Um, yeah, then the stadium stampede um promo yeah whatever i i i've had my my arguments for why they they should have chosen either this or blood and guts um not both within like three weeks of each other um on previous tripods go check them out on my great fuels youtube page um yeah whatever then the powerhouse will whatever we want to call them and and christian fighting in the background um cool i think they should have they should have had their match i don't know i don't know what they'll what'll happen to the casino battle royal but i like that they do actually have like interwoven stories um of the christian versus you know powerhouse but um all right let's go let's go let's move on i'm sick and tired of this goddamn bullshit hangman adam page versus joy janela hangman adam page plate couldn't find the tunnel joy janela out with simon phoenix from demolition man (laughs) 
Uh, Janella, That's an insult to Simon Phoenix, too, by the way. <laughs> Joey Janella mock, mocks Car Shields Employee of the Month by doing the flare strut post chops. Hangman ain't having any of it. Match goes to picture in picture where the slap chop fest continues. Janella gets the upper hand and shows off. Hangman bleeding from the mouth. Janella looking like Hangman's outer shape brother, holding his own, executing a snap German to the bottom turnbuckle to Hangman. Flying elbow gets him a two and a half. Hangman's forehead busted open, winning with the buckshot lariat. Taz gets the mic, introduces Brian Cage. Cage makes his way in the ring. Hangman with Mike still bleeding like a fountain. Calls the shots that Team Taz will attack. Tells Cage to leave these assholes out of it on Sunday. Cage agrees. Uh, Sticks, what were your thoughts on uh, Hangman versus Joy Janela? Just two things. One, my God, fucking Hangman took some goddamn damage. And two, the fuck do we got Taz out there for when the match they, that essentially didn't have anybody out there from his fucking group? But then we find out the reason why. It, whatever. Fuck this. Fuck this guy. Fuck this shit. Uh, Seriously, this this is fuck this. Brett, thoughts on this match? Joey Janela needs to be fired like two years ago. Um, I've never liked Joey Janela. I feel like he, he he's just the embodiment of Jersey Shore guy who wants to be a wrestler, so he just does a bunch of violent shit. Um, and clearly, how the fuck do you bust up Hangman Adam Page that badly in just a regular Twice. match? Yeah, like what? Well, the mouth how? and the, and the head. That forehead was terrible. Yeah. He was getting like, remember Beth Phoenix? Well, how did he bust him up? Was it was it during the like the punches the, and the elbow? The elbow drop yeah. to the. Like I have the no idea. Rope. I have no clue. Sure. I, I was trying to figure that out. I'm like, how the fuck? I mean, I could see the busted mouth. You know he like, didn't. You know he didn't blade. Oh fuck no! Hangman ate that. He's a way. He's above that. Yeah, that was just stupid. And Sunny Kiss also. I just Sunny Kiss. I don't get it. So I don't get the appeal of Sunny. Yay, yay! We're including everybody, but like, I don't get the appeal of Sunny Kiss. You know, it's just confusing to me of that. Like, sometimes it's okay for a guy to hit Sunny Kiss, but sometimes it's not. And like, sometimes it's a man. That ass, I, though. But that and you ass, take though. that back. You take that back <laughs> right Sorry, now. Sorry, that's the, that's the jail in me. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh Jesus! Oh my God! Um, but yeah, uh, get the CAPD on this case right now. Um, but yeah, it, both both of them need, need to be gone. Sunny Kiss is not that good. Joy Janela is sucks ass. I was so sad when I saw that he was going to be in a match against Hangman. Um, whatever. Yeah, Taz. I didn't mind Taz being on commentary because I like I like Taz on commentary. Um, but I think that they should have set this up way better because they should have started setting up the fact that Hangman wants to Cage one on one without everyone else like earlier because they kind of did and they stopped and they did again. Um, it should have been more consistent. Maybe a steel cage match would have been good um, for this kind of thing. You know, Page versus Cage in a cage, um, in a rampage <laughs> with Page as a special ref. Um, but you know, I think I don't know. This was a this sucked. The first three things sucked, um, and then you know whatever. Okay, Hangman, move. Hangman's a fucking looked like he had clown paint on. Moving on from this segment, I'm very glad he's joining at this particular moment. Because I believe the people's decent champ knows exactly what I'm about to talk about. Julius underscore Caesar has entered the Zoom. How was your night and how was your week, my friend? Oh, yeah. I've been lit since 1030 this morning. Fuck oh, yeah. This shit sure rolling. <laughs> so that's how the greatest decent champ fucking rolls. That's how we roll. Wait, we get what, lit. Six, I'm not allowed to drink yet legally. I don't know what you're talking about. He said he said the greatest. He said yeah, the greatest. The greatest. Not, the, greatest. not the second best. You're just a footnote. Well, You're just interesting. a footnote. footnote. I, would think the superstar, I would think the superstar of the year would actually be but de facto the greatest decent champion. But I mean, you know what you could hear. You, you would you would think that. You would think yeah. that, but since he can't beat the greatest decent champion, he's <laughs> just the superstar of the year. So the greatest decent champion has well, been drinking since 10 30 in the morning. Well, we know why you couldn't beat the greatest the greatest decent champion of all time and he took care of that problem on dying meat last night which of course you can find as well he's he's great great champion champion he gets shook by seeing someone in a fucking hallway he, he struggled hey he hey. struggled <laughs> real hard and by that guy the, he struggled real guy, hard the guy who left eminem in the fucking dryer for fucking 15 <laughs> minutes too much and ended up coming out fucking five sizes too small the fuck <laughs> Well, that being said, Julius <laughs> underscore Caesar, we have reached the point of AEW where I have mentioned, I immediately went to the tripod chat to say, Mox and Kingston were cutting a promo 
calling the young cucks Rod and Todd Flanders. It looked like they were going to burn the cucks' shoes, but it went to commercial <laughs> mid promo. I disrespect. Laughed my, I laughed my ass off. I, I mentioned. Sorry, it interrupted. And He's then been back, doing it. Back I've been, I've shit. been, I've been hot for a fucking long time, Caesar. I've been, re- I've been waiting for this shit since fucking Tony Skeets decided to go on fucking Twitter and jerk. No, don't own- mention it. No, we don't have a lot of time, Caesar. No, we can't. Six, we can't. six has a gallon of mics in his gut right now. So, uh, oh, and we're going. <laughs> uh, back from commercial, they restart the promo. Uh, Kingston says Bucks quit on the locker room. Maybe Mox will be an EVP. Mox goes, no, I don't want that. I don't want that. Kingston, Kingston goes, you sure? Uh, they were burying the shoes, by the way. Yeah. Cesar, what did you think of this promo? Uh, uh, of course, these two can talk. The best part was they had them halfway buried in some mud. So that just made it heavier. So that, that was, I guess they're getting a workout in. But uh, uh, Mox going, uh, how much did these cost? I don't know. I don't care. No, no, seriously. I don't know. I don't care. I don't know. I don't care. <laughs> just wanted to steal the shoes. And then not keep them or resell them. He just wanted to bury them. Because that's what they plan on doing to the Bucks. Uh, but yeah, great promo. But yeah, the interruption. So it was funny because I got on Instagram and I saw the promo. And then I was like, oh man, I wonder what Mangaria was talking about. I gotta, I gotta like, hopefully I'll notice it. Because I was watching the actual show later, because I I wanted to fast forward through the commercials. And then I was just like, I was, I remember, I was like, oh, the paper, I was like, oh, there's a promo. I was like, Wait, that promo was like a minute. I felt like that was too quick. So I rewound it. And I go, is this live live? Did these niggas just like cut out on a promo? I was like, I, I was like, I better too see the rest. Too hot for TV. Too hot for TV. <laughs> I was like, I better see the rest of this shit when they come back. And I was like, if that promo ended there, this makes sense why it's on Instagram right now. Like the whole promo. I was like, this has got to be the dumbest shit I have ever seen. If they're really just like, guy in the truck was like, nope, commercial. <laughs> oh, oh shit! I think I, I think I interrupted that promo. All right, we back. Wait a minute, Eddie dropped the n bomb. Commercial, <laughs> commercial, commercial. I know he said it. I know he, he stole some shoes. I know he said it. The only way uh, they could whatever, have whenever I watched that, the only way they could I, legit save that was if they showed the young bucks in a TV truck. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. Whenever I watch wrestling live when it's happening and I just get so fucking worked up, I am like, I gotta tell somebody, I gotta tell somebody. <laughs> That's why I asked Sticks. I'm like, are you watching this? I'm, like, me message, I'm, like, Dude, I'm, at, I'm like, fuck, man, I'm at work. What happened? He's like, oh no, they corrected I, it. Like, I just fuck, get so happened? fucking worked up. Like I have to tell someone because my wife doesn't give a shit. And, and True. So True. I'm just like, oh, I gotta talk. Yeah, shout out, Mrs. Leave me with a fucking cliffhanger. Oh, no, Miss Mangria. Happy happened? birthday, Miss Mangria. Hold on. Uh, I'm going to have her watch this uh, later. Let's all start. Happy birthday, right? Okay, ready? One, Let's two, say, I don't three. say happy birthday. Happy birthday, birthday to you. Tell me your language, Happy birthday, 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 birthday to you. Happy birthday, Mangria. Real MVP. Happy birthday to you. Love you, wife. What up, though? Happy, thank happy you birthday. for putting up with Mr. Mary Green, by the way. Yeah. Yes. Happy birthday as well to Juanita Green Card. <laughs> Fuck that bitch. Ay, ay, ay. Oi, oi, oi. Brett and Sticks, uh, real quick, give me your thoughts on that promo from Mox and Kingston. This was the best thing about Dynamite. That's it. Brett? Uh, there was um, something better. There was something better. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think this sure. is I I was also like Cesar. I was I, I hadn't seen the promo on Instagram though. And when I saw that message from you, it was like, oh, I gotta watch out for this. I thought it was like something small, that, like something happened like in a match. And then all of a sudden I'm like watching this promo and it cuts and like, oh, that's what Angry was talking about. Okay. <laughs> you know, this was I love these promo. That the like there's two good things about Tony Seats letting his wrestlers do whatever the fuck they want. MJF being able to go curse out kids and then Mox and Kings just being great. whatever the fuck they want. Because these two are great promos. I, I enjoyed the hell out of that. Don't say that because it's going to end up on Twitter and he's going to get a bigger fucking head. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, you see, you see. I agree. Yeah, no, they're coming for you. I'll, I'll, see you guys on, I'll see you guys to 15 to life. <laughs> they're they're, com- they're coming for you for that Sunny Kiss pro- comment that you made. The new host of the After Party Hangover, Mrs. Mangria, is now joining. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Pac, interview, uh, Pac interrupts Tony, who is bringing out Orange Cassidy, Bresky's favorite part of the night. You yep. think Pac? You think Pac be Royden? He's got that Eddie Guerrero physique. 
Uh, Pat yeah, but runs his mouth, calls out Omega, Don Callis on the Tron, whining. Omega tried to sneak up on Pac, but fails. But the numbers game wins as the Good Brothers attack, but Lucha Bros to the rescue. Omega about to hit the one-winged angel. Orange Cassidy and the best friends out. Orange Cassidy has document for Omega. It's shredded. Uh, super, oh, Super Tang punch delivered. Tries to pick up belt. Pac stops him, but Super <laughs> Tang number two to Pac. Picks up the belt. Bretzky's okay. blood ran cold as Orange Cassidy holds the AEW championship belt. Tony interviewing Jade and Fuckboy. Matt Hardy struggling to be relevant. Interrupts. Threatened by restraining order. I feel you, Matt. Uh, the, the honky <laughs> name is Mark Sterling. Uh, Cesar, what were your thoughts on the PAC Orange Cassidy Omega interview segment? Well, OC taking the pin. That's oh, all yeah. I can say. <laughs> oh, OC, you hear that, Jake? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Jake. Oh, you know he isn't. He's on this episode. Brag about that. Brag about yeah. that Sunday. Uh, uh, we all knew this was gonna. This was gonna. I didn't know it was gonna lead to Pac too. So I guess they worked it in there. Because yeah, it just seemed like Kenny and OC were the only ones having uh, interactions. Yeah. Um But uh, so Pac worked his shit in there. Um, yeah, it was whatever. It was ripped up again. Uh, uh you know, you like the the small things, which I looked for. I think it said Kevin. That yeah, was marked out and said Kenny. You know, Orange, Orange is just too lazy to know his name. So I'm guessing like uh, Trent or Sexy Trent? Chucky Trent? T probably wrote Kenny on there. Uh, of course, of course, the uh, good hoes come out there to interfere. And then the lucha hoes chase him off. How dare uh, I gotta give, Then the best hoes came out. Yeah. <laughs> and then the best hoes did come out with, uh, with uh, OC. Alien ho. An alien ho. <laughs> No, the UFO. The ex- yes, the UFO. The UFO. <laughs> she should call her finisher that, the UFO. That'd be great. <laughs> uh, what did you think of Tony interviewing uh, Jade and the fuck boy and Matt Hardy? Yeah, I didn't get it. She's yeah. that bitch. Nobody cares. She's that bitch. She's that bitch. I'll Stick. give her that. She's that bitch. Stick's thought on this segment and the fuck shit afterwards? Just me, like Cesar said, o- Orange Cassie taking the pin. Bretzky. I was actually really happy because I knew Orange Cassidy was now losing. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, man, man. Also, Kenny looks like an, Ken, by the Kenny has had a, such a terrible reign with the title. He, AEW Kenny. He looks like a chicken shit, right? I'm going to say it. I'm going to say this right now. And I feel like the fucking guy's like, I don't care. You hurt your elbow. That guy. Like, I, I'm going to say it. Heel Kenny in AEW fucking sucks. Oh, Absolutely man. fucking sucks. Horrible. New Japan Kenny shits on this Cleaner guy. Kenny. Cleaner Kenny. Oh, top oh. tier. Top tier. This, this Kenny, he yeah. can't go to promo for his life, by the way. Can't go to promo for his life. Also, he looks like an idiot because he he could have easily hit a one-winged angel on Pac and just kind of called it a day. Like, why wouldn't yeah. you do that? He wouldn't um, have give a fuck that fucking Orange Cassidy song started. Yeah. Who, yeah. yeah. Why? Do we, Bam. Yeah, nails was, him. Okay. Come on. Bring your punk ass out. Orange I cat. did. I did. I did laugh my ass off at the fact that Kenny got a paper cut. I hope it was real. That'd be that'd be <laughs> yeah. hilarious. We couldn't yeah. open the fucking letter. Um, but, you know, I noticed the Kevin thing as well. I thought that was funny because Orange Cassidy. That, that's Orange Cassidy's character that I liked when they fucking did it in the beginning. But now it's gotten old, as I've said multiple times on past podcasts. Um, but yeah, whatever. I don't really care. Orange Cassidy's losing, which makes me very happy. Um, yeah. Then we go to whatever the fuck. Uh, Jade Cargill's that bitch. And um, I don't. The only reason I don't mind this as much as I usually do because Smart Mark Sterling is on that fucking the the off the the off the hop rope podcast um and so i get mad respect to that guy because that guy's hilarious on that podcast but um but yeah no i i don't care i don't know why they're making mark sterling all of a sudden a, a major character because he fucking was the lawyer for mjf that one time and now all of a sudden he's improving jade cargill's g- game all that all that much more so i don't know how that works but uh she's that bitch right gonna- on the payroll they need something for him to do I'm going to talk all the way up to the main event now. Oh, dear Lord. Uh, Jade Cargill uh, versus Kylan King, Jade Cargill with the Cinemax softcore porn music versus Kylan King, Albino Bailey, and Captain Marvel gear. Uh, Cargill the disrespect curls, to Pam. Cargill curls with King's body, then drops her. Commercial picture in picture. Cargill continues to dominate. I got to be honest, guys. I wasn't really paying attention. Dynamite. Me neither. Don't worry. Dynamite finished downloading. 
Uh, <laughs> zero interest in this match. I watched the Friends reunion last night. It was funny. Uh, the dudes look too horrible. bad. It was actually pretty good. The dudes look horrible, but the chicks remain decent. I never really. Oh, Cargo won. Uh, Jake the Snake <laughs> talking about a dog <laughs> with wings. Uh, Murder Hawk wants Miro. Dante Martin versus Lana's husband, the TNT champion. <laughs> Lana's husband wins. Jake the Snake comes out speaking Bulgarian or some bullshit. There is a pull mm-hmm. apart. He, he didn't speak any language. He just uh, kind of said some rambling words. Yeah, she drunk and pill popping. The longest reigning <laughs> AEW champ with newer shitty belt cuts lame promo. <laughs> Thank God the doctor comes out and interrupts. Says she's going to be the face of a whole new era, not 316. D-M-D. D-M-D. Uh, Sammy Guevara comes out with the signs. I was trying to write as fast as possible. This Sunday, 48 hours, Spears, with every card you read, your time draws near. My warning, your time draws near. At, uh, I was going to say straight Sonia. It says at, <laughs> at, at, at they got Stadium drunk. Stadium no Stampede. Uh, Stadium Stampede. Stampede. Your time draws near. No amount of chairs will save you. The Spanish God will hit you up. Uh, Ethan Page and Scorpio Sky versus Evil Earth and Stu. Don't call me Dick Grayson. Picture in picture, Sky dominates Stu. Evil Uno with the end of days to Sky. Mm-hmm. Uh, great double team by Dark Order. Get over here. Sky had heel kick. Uh, Sky had heel lock in on Stu while Ethan hit the ego's edge to Evil Terrible Uno. Name. In for the win, even though all four men were in the ring, by the way. Uh, Darby yep. with Sting minions come out, attack. Sting was one of the minion who, minions. Who cares? Tony pops wood, of course. They run down the double or nothing card. That leads up to the main segment of the night. Julius Caesar, what did you think of all the shit I just vomited? Uh, did you start? Yeah, I didn't care for Jake Cargill. She's yeah. got smaller pants, so she got smaller gear. Sometimes you got smaller gear. Um, Okay, cool. Uh, and, and somehow her opponent is eleven and three, and she's six and zero. And they made it seem like the girl had a chance or something. We all know what time it was. Um, what was after that? Spanish God, yeah, he threw some cards. He had trouble throwing them cards. He had a little trouble throwing them cards. Yeah, he you know, almost gave a guy a paper cut. Looks like two paper <laughs> yeah. cuts on one show. Two paper cuts on one yeah. show. <laughs> two paper cuts on one show. You forgot uh, about uh, Lana's husband versus Dante Martin. No, I didn't. I just, I just didn't. Care. Nah, there's a reason uh, why. <laughs> but the good doctor, yeah. you skipped over the good doctor. I'm getting to that last because it was the best part. God of damn, all of get... <laughs> you leaped over like two segments. Yeah, because the doctor. They the don't best fucking part. matter. When Snake oh. said there, when Snake said there was nothing else good about AEW, is that we all know the doctor's winning. I know. I forgot about that. As soon as I said that, I'm like, fuck me. It's we all know that she's winning. DMD. Uh, shout out to Bailey Story. Go watch it. So it doesn't get deleted. She had a picture with her kind of doing the Britt Baker move on Bianca Belair. And she like tagged Britt Baker and said, Hey, can I be a dentist? <laughs> Wait, I gotta see this. <laughs> so oh, it's not there Pam. anymore. It's not there anymore. Ah, shout out to Pam, because that shit was funny. Uh okay, yeah. We all knew Miro was gonna beat that kid in his first title defense. Uh, I didn't know his brother got hurt, so that's why he's been wrestling singles. Hmm. Um yeah, I think he tore his ACL or something like that. Yeah, Ooh. that's fine. Uh, don't get me wrong, that kid is nice. Um, they're both pretty good. Uh, but you, we all knew that. Here was going. And then, oh, yeah, Jake, Jake's sitting there jerking off, uh, talking that yin yang. And then Miro comes in. Not Miro, uh, Myrtle Hawk comes in. That should be a good, that should be a good match. Uh, yeah, mentioned the doctor, mentioned that. What was next? What's last? A tag match, a tag match. Ethan tag match was good. Scorpio Sky versus Evil yeah. Uno and Stu Grayson. Yeah, the tag match was good. How this cracker hit an end of days and the other cracker hit a 450 and they're not getting wins? I mean, like, Stu Grayson well, hit a when you have the best booker. <laughs> Stu Grayson hit a mean ass 450 while Evil Uno was hitting that cannonball. That shit was dope. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a 450. Let's put a, little, let's put a little bit of respect on a 450's name. Let's put a little bit more respect on it. Uh, but yeah, hit an end of day, so I guess they're just trying to shit on Baron Corbin because nobody kicks out of that shit when Baron Corbin Who is it shitting on Corbin. <laughs> <laughs> Poor uh, guy. But no, I thought the tag match was good. Yeah, I, I don't care that. Yeah. So so all the sting minions are like five six. 
and then there's a six one minion. <laughs> I'm gonna hit him like I hit the rest of them. <laughs> I, I, I said that out loud, looking at Scorpio. I was like, "Nigga, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you?" And then you go keep hitting him like he's supposed to fall on the second or third shot. Uh, we all know Darby's gonna have to carry this match with fake broken uh, ribs because things old, dusty, crusty ass ain't gonna be keep up with any of the three uh, younger, in shape guys in the ring. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it was the tag match. I thought was great. The after part was a little shitty. So. Six. Start from the top. Jade versus Kylan. Oh, fuck that man. I only got a few clip notes. One, the women's <laughs> title went from a cock ring to a pinky ring now. <laughs> And two, fucking goddamn Scorpio Sky should still be in SCU, and fucking Ethan Page should still be with Joss Alexander and be the fucking North, the greatest tag team in fucking pro wrestling. And three, I kind of miss the gimps that the Dark Order had. That's all. That's all. Bretsky, just, just uh, comment on what you want. Yeah. Don't forget, um, <laughs> don't forget about no, the doctor. Yeah, no, I don't no particular me. order. Yes, yeah, Jade, Jade Cargill hit a, a glam slam and it's called, you know, whatever. Um, Kylan King randomly has badass music, even though she's Kylan King and she's done TV like mm-hmm. five times to job to Sheeta. Like, okay. Facts. Um, what else? What the fuck? Yeah, Mark Sterling apparently is giving his card. I actually like that. Mark Sterling's giving his card to everyone. Card out to <laughs> he, yeah. He's kind of like a discount Robert Stone um, from what I'm yeah. seeing based on that. Um, what was it? What else was there? Fuck. Oh, yeah, the doctor. What a Sheeta had her best. This was Sheeta's best, most coherent promo in English, and that's saying something because this flat fucking was terrible. Um, and I saw it on Twitter, um, because people were like, Well, wow, cool, you upgraded the title, but it still looks so small, like it's so tiny. And and, and someone says, But no, but but they said, um, that that it had gold and it was encrusted in diamonds, and it, it's not about the size of the title. Do you would you really rather that the WWE where it's just a W and it's all different color? Yeah, I would actually. Um, I I would actually rather because it looks that. like a title because it's yeah. big and it looks equal. To, you want to it looking equal to the men's the Raw Women's That's Championship legit. looks looks pretty fucking equal to the WWE Championship if you ask me. The Universal Championship, you got damn right. Yeah, and it's all under one company, so why wouldn't it have the company logo on it? Um, as much as we all love the World Heavyweight Title, why wouldn't that happen? So don't don't fucking defend that title. That title was basically just like, oh, we have a little bit extra capital because uh, we fired we fired one dude. You know, for 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 saying racist things towards Sheeta, so we have a little bit extra capital. We don't have to pay that dude um, on commentary. So you know, uh, you know, we're we're gonna we're gonna exp- we're gonna splurge and make make the women's side a little bit bigger. Um, but no, no it's basically sucks. we we're, we're gonna get a better title, so that way the fucking doctor will defend yes. that bitch. <laughs> yeah, okay. Sheeta's like, oh, I, I've I've been for the people. What? When have you defended that? Yeah. Like, you did it like three times this year. You're like, what is she like four and zero this year? Anyway, yeah, then the doctor comes out. It's going to mean not the era of 316, the era of DMD. Great line. Doctor saves every second she's in. Love the doctor. Uh, can't wait till she wins because, man. Also, the DMD chance with her was awesome. I like that. Mm-hmm. The fan shaking DMD with her. Um, yeah, then Miro, whatever, beats uh, beats up the fucking, uh, the, the fucking Dante, right? Apparently, he's super young, whatever. Um, I don't, don't care. Be the youngest champion ever. He Apparently, basically beats up yeah. Goose from Top Gun. <laughs> um, yeah. I, the sad thing is, I would look forward to Miro versus Archer, except for the fact that there's no reason why they should not like each other. There's no build whatsoever to this match. And everyone's like, oh, well, Archer is really mad at Miro. Why? He kind of came out He kind of came out with no explanation at the very end of Dynamite when he won the title, and they kind of was like, oh, well, they hate each other. Um, okay, cool, whatever. It'll be it'll be a good match, but I have no reason to give a fuck about it. Um, okay, what else was there? Um, the tag team match: Ethan Page and the Sky versus Uno and Gracie. Yeah, I thought it was good. I mean, it, it it was probably in terms of wrestling the best wrestling match on the card. Um, just in terms of like not actual segments. Um, but yeah, I I don't know. I think I agree with Caesar. I put some respect on the four fifty. Like. There's the AEW. I mean, it's a problem in all of wrestling, but AEW is the most prolific at it because it's an indie with lights. Um, and they basically are just like, oh well, you know, we have infinite kickouts. Like, no, nah, come on. Like, it's not like he hit like just like a like a splash that like people kick out. Like, no, it's a four fifty, dude. Like, like put some respect on his name. I do like how how Jr. put over Sue Grace in big time throughout the entire match. Um, Ego's Edge, terrible fucking name. 
uh how i doubt that he got i i, I would highly doubt he got clearance to use the razor did he use the razor's edge in the north no they had they had a tag team finisher okay so i don't know why he's doing the razor's edge but it, it didn't look as good as razor does or even as as priest does it um and kind of just threw him when he got him up yeah and it's, it's just an, he called it the ego's edge that's a terrible name i don't think we've ever actually even been really introduced to ethan page other than he he you know he did stuff on dark and now he's with scorpio sky that I mean, they should not be a tag team and yeah i knew exactly which one was sting right away out of the minions um because he's the one that's way the airline yeah and they and there were two of them that were left just kind of standing on the stage yeah, yeah. Or something. Um, yeah, whatever. I don't give a fuck about the end of this match. I don't give a fuck about their match at double or nothing. I don't give a fuck about most matches double or nothing. So uh, let's move on to the fucking Eric Bischoff show. Eric Bischoff, guest MC, comes out to the 25th anniversary of NWO. Someone in crowd shouting, what? Brings out Inner Circle. Jericho thanks Eric. Inner Circle highlight package. They copied the Tyson push. They copied the beer bath. Wow. Uh, ripping off WWE. Ah, oh, well, he's the man. Dad by But Derek. there's only one con in professional wrestling. <laughs> Santana talks, Hagar talks, Sammy talks, Jericho talks, says he loves the inner circle. MJF interrupts on Tron. They took my number one Jew hostage. Inner circle rushed to stadium. <laughs> Pinnacle ambushed them. If Jericho's arm injury is legit, how is this going to work? FTR pile drives Santana Ortiz through tables. I'm going to let all three of you gang rape the, the main event. Oh, my God, Mangria. Nice. I, know you're, I know you're talking about jail a lot, but Jesus. Go for it. Drop the soap, uh, gang rape this main I, event. I didn't, I didn't watch it, so you guys have extra time. There you go. Gretzky and Sticks. Fuck uh, it, EP hey, it. man. This fuck it. This, this I'll fast forward why, it with the captions on right now. <laughs> this is the reason why AEW <laughs> is going to fail. I'm just going to put it as, unfortunately – I, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys know I did order this. It was in, it was in after I watched this where I was kind of a little like, boy, if this is the last time I said we ever will get inner circle together, which I really don't think it will be, but I, I'm a, I I want to watch this. And now when I woke up ever since, since I woke up this morning, I'm kind of regretting it, but it is what it is. I'm a wrestling fan. I'm going to sit there and I'll watch it hopefully in a drunken stupor, but it, it was kind of nice, but the, the lure out the inner circle with fucking beating up Dean Malenko. My number one Jew. Yeah, your number one Jew, by the way. Mm-hmm. It, it's just like, what are we? Okay, whatever. I've just, this ever. I, I'm just gonna. I'm gonna be completely honest. Since Bresky sent that link for fucking Tony Skeets, I've just pretty much <laughs> been like, fuck this, fuck these guys, fuck this promotion, and <laughs> go, go, Brett. I'll let you have it, man. <laughs> Go I mean, Jeff. yeah, it was, I mean, yeah, I, I also thought it was funny. Eric Bischoff got zero love in terms of social media plugs in his uh, nameplate. Uh, it just said Eric Bischoff in big bold letters. Nothing. Uh, and, and it was like, it was like booking visionary or some sh- fucking suck up shit like that. Um, also, I will say real quick, if you want, if you don't, if you believe that W sees AW as a threat, Eric Bischoff had a great line on his, on his podcast, uh, on some podcast I saw, it might've been his, might not have been his, I saw on Instagram where he basically is like, I showed up on AEW like a week or two before I was inducted in the Hall of Fame and I was still inducted in the Hall of Fame. Like, I don't really think they care. Like, I don't think Vince cares at all. So, yeah, Vince I don't think... Vince ain't sweating you, Tony Khan. He ain't sweating you at all. And I'll bet you Nick Khan probably got, got like, forwarded via forward, yeah. via, forwarded via, like, his his secretary's interns, like, boyfriend, you think, you think daughter's Vince, boyfriend. Like, you yeah. think Vince, after he found <laughs> out that, like, the guy who's, like, owning AEW, his last name is Khan, you think he went up to Nick is like, you fucking related to this guy or what? <laughs> you probably saw that. Twice. You probably saw that and was like, "That's hilarious." I'm yeah. not worried anymore. Like, yeah. if I was, you're worried... hired. You're hired. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but whatever. The thing is, just a fine stuff. Again, the, the, I do like the inner circle. I think they've been great. I didn't realize it's been 18 months already. Um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, I didn't realize how much they copied. Like, I get taking. Like, we talked about this last week, last time too, when they did the fucking beer bath, like or the bubbly bath, like edit it, like spray this them all. Got a Canadian God T-shirt. Sorry, I'm sorry. Oh my god, this is great. Uh, but yeah, no, she's our live commentary. But uh, (laughs) oh, this is good. But uh, yeah, this uh, at least they spray. We said spray them with the bottles instead of like the fucking hose. They other than that though, like I'd like I do like the inner circle. Um, I think they've kind of come into the face role pretty well. 
Um, but yeah, I think Dean Lenko was an iffy choice. Like, I get Jericho, but like, I feel like it was more. I think that the whole Dean Lenko choice was like okay because they were gonna fawn a fight anyway, and they gotta do this segment where they have them fight it out in the field beforehand, you know, like before the pay per view. So I think it was like okay because they brought in Dean Lenko last week, whatever it was. Um, yeah, I, I would have liked the, the double pile drivers through the cha- through the tables if it didn't take so long for them to figure out the camera work for it. <laughs> yeah. It, took it wasn't two- that. He, uh, the, the cameraman had to stand in the middle because uh, Cash was too far left. And yeah. once the cameraman stood still, you saw Cash move over to the right. Yeah, and then MJF <laughs> got in the way of the camera. Yeah. Yeah, then MJF walked in front of the camera. They had to switch it twice. And I, twice, think, yeah. I think that, like, they all did pile drivers, but we didn't really see that because it was I kind of like... Was, I think it was power bombs and pile drivers. Yeah, uh, I wasn't really sure. Um, but, you know, those were brutal, but it just took too long to set it up. But, uh, yeah, yeah, whatever. I don't know what this means for fucking Stadium Stampede. I have said again, I don't think this should be a Stadium Stampede. They should have either done this or Blood and Guts, not both of them, at least not within a month of each other. Um, but, yeah, uh, cool, great. Yeah, I know, you're right. It was all pile drivers. Yeah, just, I saw I saw Wardlow hit a really shitty pile driver on Hager. I was like, Ooh. they should have had blood and guts at double or nothing. Yes, I agree. Let's kick off the predictions with the pre-show match: Serena Deeb, the NWA Women's Champion, versus Riho Bresky. Who's winning this? Serena Deeb. Fuck Riho. Riho's the worst. Bresky chooses Deeb. Sticks. Who you got? <laughs> Seriously, it's Serena Deeb. There ain't no way they're fucking having her lose. Titles don't change hands in the pre-show, right, Jake? Caesar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right, Brad. Okay, uh, right. yeah, Serena Deeb. Caesar. What are you thinking, Caesar? He said Deeb. Oh, I okay. said Serena Deeb. Sorry. I'll just go and pick Riho for the fuck of it. You dumb man. I swear okay, to God, I fucking Riho main show. Win. No particular order. I just wrote the matches down. The AEW Tag Team Champions, the Young Cucks, versus Mox and Kingston. Caesar, who's winning this? Young Cucks. Okay. Uh, sticks. I'm holding out hope, and I'm going with Mox and Kingston. Brett. I am also hoping, and I'm going to go with Mox and Kingston as well. I'm, I, I think that they can do it. I am on Caesar. It hasn't, been, it hasn't um, been a long enough title reign. And plus, there's it's been no- pretty long. It's uh, fucking Don Callis is going to get involved. Good Brother is going to fuck it up. That's what I think. Up next, uh, Sting and Darby versus Ethan and Scorpio. I'll pick first because I could give a flying fuck. I'll say Sting and Darby because Sting's a veteran. Well, blah, blah, blah. I think me and Bretzky made fun of this earlier, saying that Sting's going to do three moves and Darby's going to do the rest. But yeah. Bret- Bretzky, that being said, who's taking this? Um, I'm going to go out on a limb here and I'm going to say um, all ego and, and, and Scorpio take this one because they randomly want to push these guys now all of a sudden, even though they shouldn't be a tag team um, and they're randomly getting randomly fighting Sting, but I'm going to say they win somehow. Sticks. I'm going with who I want to win, Sky and, and Paige. Okay. Cesar? I'm also going Sky. And, uh... Wow. All righty. Up next... The Stadium Stampede, Inner Circle versus the Pinnacle. Cesar, who is taking this shit? Got to be the Pinnacle. Okay. Uh, the way the Inner Circle had that send off. I know the way it looks, it should be reverse decision and it should be Inner Circle, but I think it's time they all split up and do their own thing. And it's time for like a new group of guys you're trying to promote to be that number one heel group in the company. Um, so I am sorry, you, you got an OMJF because the world wanted him to beat Mox. Yeah. And and you did not give it to us. Uh, after that great promotional lead, that story had the best build for MJF to be an asshole we could all hate and having the chat having the strap. Uh, so yeah, it's got for me, it's gotta be pinnacle. Sticks. I'm going with because I'm afraid of how they would split them up and how much a lot of them wouldn't get much traction. I'm going. I'm hoping the inner circle wins. Bretzky. Um, I I feel like if they if the inner circle breaks up, Jericho is Jericho. He's not going to get fucked over. Sammy. They apparently they seem to have big plans for Hager. I don't really. I mean, I like Jay part time in anyway. He's part time in anyway. exactly. He's part time anyway, so he doesn't really give a fuck anyway. Um, and Santana Ortiz haven't been treated well as it is. 
Uh, so I'm going to say Pinnacle wins. But to Cesar's point real quick, sure, MJF didn't win, but at least we got to heal Kenny Omega who won. So you're picking Pinnacle. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm picking Pinnacle. I will go the inner circle. Up next, TNT champion Miro versus Murderhawk. I will kick it off with Sticks Adam. Who's taking this match? I'm going to go with Murderhawk. Okay. That's a wild guess. Gretzky. It's, it's, it's Miro. I've got, a, I've got a gallon of mics in me, man, so I'm wild. <laughs> I don't even care. Yeah, it's got, it's got, it's got to be Miro. Caesar. It's got to be Miro. I agree. Hey, Mangria, I just realized something. We have one of the two combatants from the first match on AEW this week on our podcast. Cesar Bononi, how are you doing? <laughs> they, call him, they call him Cesar or something. Or something real yeah, he did. They fucked it up. It was like Cesar. It's Cesar. Cesar Bononi. Cesar. Yeah, yeah it sounded like Cesar. He's called him Cesar yeah. Bononi. Cesar. <laughs> I'm angry. You guys talk about how much of a waste of time that weigh-in shit was. Yes, we did. You need to go back and listen to the rant (laughs) of the year. Rant of the year from the great Bretzky, man. It was incredible. Okay. The Casino Battle Royal. This is always my favorite predictions because it could be anybody. We all four can pick someone different. So we will kick things off. With the wait, wait, who's in it? Can you go down? Yeah, can we put it? I have no idea. Okay. Okay. You just you just fucking stalling right now. While you pull that up, can you believe this asshole Cody is the only motherfucker in the goddamn land that gets a weigh in before every paper? It's like he had a press conference. That fucking looked like a goddamn D-rated Rocky flick. Okay, 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 okay. And teach me how to use a scale. Kristen Cage and QT Marshall starts on the mic. P2H. Penta El Cerro Mero, Jungle Boy, Irrelevant Matt Hardy, Mark Quinn, Isaiah Cassidy, The Blade, Evil Uno, Colt Cabana. Boom, boom. Preston boom. Vance? That's 10. Yeah. 10. Griff Garrison, Brian Pillman Jr., Max Caster, Platinum, Anthony Bowens, QT Marshall, Nick Comoroto, Dustin Rhodes, Lee Johnson, and to be announced. That's a fucking a bunch of tag teams in that shit. Exactly. The only reason, <laughs> the only reason to buy, I, there's actually a reason to buy the pay per view now because we might get a platinum max rack. No, we will, but he'll put it oh, on. Oh, we will. For free. No, I didn't. That's true. Is, he is, he is, does uh, put them on Insta. Uh, is um, Ray Phoenix injured? I don't know. I, I, don't know. I, pick him, I pick him in every. You know what? Fuck it. I'm picking. You do. Him. I don't give a shit. You're picking Ray Phoenix. I don't I'm care. Picking, he's he's right. picking he might be TBA. Every every battle royal AEW has, no matter what, I pick Ray Phoenix. <laughs> so he's gonna take the mask off and come out to the ring and be the Joker. <laughs> <laughs> he's he'll our, be Phoenix. He'll be Phoenix Ray. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you pick, Caesar? Uh, so I I was thinking all week. Something on that fuck shit dynamite. I honestly don't know anymore. I think I'm about to go with my original pick, but now I don't think he'll win. I was gonna go with Christian Cage, but the way him and Will Hobbs were just fighting in the background, I feel like they're gonna extend this feud they have, plus with Ricky Starks being injured. So I feel like Ricky Starks would have been in this match and they would have taken each other out and they would have maybe had like a real feud. Um and again, I, I there's nobody else I can see winning it besides Penta, but he already did that. And he already did it against Kenny. So he won the battle royal? No, but he had, he had a like a world. Remember, he was in that tournament. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then, and then he advanced because Ray couldn't go, and then he fought Kenny. I don't know. I honestly don't know. So I'm just gonna stick with Christian Cage. But I have a feeling that him and Will Hobbs are gonna like fall out and lose together, and it's gonna extend their feud. But I'm gonna go with Christian Cage. Christian Cage. Sticks. Caesar actually took mine just because of actually what they showed that promo. Well, not the promo, but then back of them fighting backstage, and just because of what since he showed up, they've been teasing him and Kenny. So I'm I'm going with fucking Christian Cage. I don't even need to ask Bresky. I know exactly what he's gonna say. Hold on, let me let me write. Let me just write it now. Austin what, Gun. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna go out on a yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah 
Fucking shitty ass cameo, fifty dollars a pop, motherfucker. I cannot believe. Can I just say, like, I texted you. I texted you quickly, Mangrio, when I watched Enemy and I saw a cameo from him. I paused this show and I said out loud at like one thirty in the morning, "This motherfucker bought a second cameo." <laughs> Just and was, to extend a feud, oh, it's brilliant. That's, so good. that's it's money brilliant. well spent. That's it's money so, well spent. The, when that's I saw so Austin Gunn pop spent. back up, I go, this nigga made Grizz on some shit for season oh, two. Yeah. I was like, oh, he's on some shit for he's season two. He's pulling out all the stops. I was like, oh, if, my God. if cameos are cheaper, we would, mm. I would definitely chip in yeah. just to have feuds with real wrestlers on either show <laughs> just to film shit but, like that. But he's, he, this man spent $100 on Austin Gunn. I cannot hey, believe hey, that. Austin got to eat too, man. He got to eat. <laughs> He's probably watching Dine Me right now. Like, yeah. Best, best, part, best part was Jake cheering the death of the million calorie bitch. <laughs> man, Korea better got a fucking gun hey, club. He's dead. I said shirt. he's dead again. Hey. Cesar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to go out on a limb here. I agree with Cesar's thinking that uh, I thought it was going to be either Hobbs or Christian, but then they kind of fought. I think they're going to eliminate each other. I'm actually going to go out on a limb. And I don't think I don't think any of us are going to be right, frankly. But I'm going to go out on a limb just because the battle row is a clusterfuck. I know I know Mangri is at least not. Hey, that's right. that's my that's my. She's <laughs> our Bononi. He's going to win. The- I'm going to say just because I really want it. I think it'd be fun, and it's not going to happen. Platinum Max Caster. Just because I really want him to win. He's the nice. only one. I, I mean, besides Hobbs and Christian, he's the only one I like in that battle royal. Um, but I mean, I guess Bowens as well, but like Bowens doesn't really talk that much. Um, Max so yeah, Hangman versus Max. Brian Cage. Stop. Wait, who'd you pick? Who'd you pick, Mangry? I yeah, picked the Ray Phoenix. Phoenix. Oh, Ray Phoenix. Oh, any, Phoenix any, gonna battle, be the joke? any right. battle royal, Ray Phoenix is my choice. Right. But rest right, right. my question is, do you think we're gonna be let down by the Joker again? Yes, the Joker hasn't really been. Yeah, it was Evan Bourne like last time. Great the last two times. And remember how badly he fucked up when he debuted? Ooh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. That's right. Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> even the sheriff, even the sheriff was like, oh, man, I felt bad for him. Well, you, yeah, remember yeah. JR, then, you remember JR covering for him? Yeah. Well, it's super oh, hot out here, so it's yeah, yeah, sweaty. Yeah, condensation on the road. Sweaty on the road tonight. That, that, might have been, that might have been the start of, of Zanka's AEW memes getting taken down. <laughs> yeah, because I know he I know he posted a meme that night. Yeah. yeah. Bretsky, Hangman versus Brian Cage. Um, it's going to be hangman when someone from team Taz comes out and Brian cage says, no, go back to the back. Okay. Uh, sticks. Hangman. Cesar. Yeah, man. The rebuild of hangman. First ever unanimous on this one. <laughs> Hangman's going to take it. Hey, I just want to see his double or nothing nameplate. Am I right? Cesar? It, I mean, that's, that's all we can hope for. Couldn't find it. the tunnel. It was great. Got 18 uh, stitches, but didn't feel it because he was drunk. <laughs> up next, Cody Rhodes, Jarrett Helmsley versus Anthony Agogo. Governor. Agogo. Cesar. Oi. Oi. Who's taking this, Cesar? Rhodes or Agogo? Don't make me say it, man. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, oh, no. He can't lose. He's oh, using God. Dusty's name. He wow. cannot lose. Wow. Fighting for America? Oh my God! Yeah, he's on like Memorial Day. Day. <laughs> All right, look. If if he loses, this is the biggest push for a guy we've never heard of in <laughs> wrestling. The guy really hasn't even wrestled a full he has match. Two he matches. Just, he has two matches. No, he punches people in the gut and they go down. No, I know. I'm minutes. I'm agreeing with you. I'm agreeing with yeah. you. He has only had yeah. two matches. Yeah, there is no way Cody's gonna take this guy to the deep waters. Because he's fucking Cody. He's going to take like 18 gut shots. Well, he's got a he's broken gonna hit, He's got broken He's going to hit a cutter. Too. He's going to get a cutter, two uh, fucking crack of shits. What's his real, what's his finisher? Everybody Cross crossroads? Him. Yeah, he's going <laughs> to jump off shits. the top. Fuck that. Then, it's going to be a big four for the win. Name. Crack of shit. Oh, yeah. Crack of shit. Yeah. <laughs> and and for like, in order to win, Cody's going to like tape up his elbow and hit that fucking dusty elbow drop shit. <laughs> And that's how he's gonna beat this guy. It is gonna be complete. Tra- this better be the first match of the night. This yeah, better be. This better be the top of the hour of any hour. Better be first match of the night. Get this shit off my out of my way. Off the rest of my card. Well, hey, right. we can't really vote against Caesar. He picked Mox the entire time. That's true. He was right. <laughs> hey, who was right? I, I was only wrong when he fought Kenny. Uh, <laughs> Bretsky, do you believe Cody will come out in some form of polka dots? In honor. Oh, of he comes out of polka oh, dots. Yeah. Just you know, cut the match off. 
Just I, sit there for 20 minutes, play spades, and drink. And tell this stories. Break, this that would be, break. More, that'd be more entertaining. I think that Cody is smart. And I think Cody is, I mean, you know, obviously Cody's, I think Cody is the best wrestler they have. However, he is smart and he's a smart businessman because I think that he's probably is starting to see that even the AEW fans are kind of turning on him um, a little bit, you know, kind of like the rumblings are starting. And I feel, again, we, uh, it should be him versus QT and a go-go versus Dustin. But, um, I, but still, I think that Cody sees that this guy has potential and I think that Cody, the businessman, knows that he can do business with a go-go down the road. And so I'm going to go out on a massive fucking limb here. And I, Boy. And I got to go with the probably the, the best theme song in AEW. And one of my, honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with, and from, from, what was it, from the north side, from the east side of, of London? Probably the east side of London. From the east side of London. The governor, Anthony Agogo, oi, Anthony Oi Gogo. Uh, I'll go with Anthony Agogo. I, I, I know I'm wrong, but I just, please, AEW, you got to make up for that Tony Skeets promo somehow. I'm not going to watch, I'm not going to buy your pay per view, but at least let me watch it for free and be happy that Agogo won. Let me, let me try to I'm going to curse Bretsky and pick the same. Uh, Sticks, oh, fuck. Who, no, do no, <laughs> Sticks who do you think's taking this? I'm going with Caesar. There ain't no way this fucking cracker ain't fucking taking an American dream <laughs> and you're going to fucking lose. Plus, they broke it out that like a go go is going to be competing with like what? I think one or two broken Bruce ribs. Yeah. Yeah. So there ain't up no way fucking Cody's dropping this from being the American dream. Up next, AEW women's champion Hikaru Shida versus unanimous. Dr. Britt Baker. Yes, unanimous. D M M D. Do we even have to ask everyone? The no. Duck, no. Yeah. Uh, we Britt all know we all, we're all picking Brit. Yeah. Fuck yes. She just got her action figure too. Yeah. Yeah. After she had to go to Twitter and fucking pretty much say what, what kind of fuck shit will this be? That someone <laughs> wait who picked pick, who picked Rio in the first round? Mangria, of course. I picked oh. Rio. Watch that bitch win. Well, so, I mean, first ever AW one champion, yeah, and she t- she had it for a long time. Serena Deeb isn't that good. Yeah, well, well the only person to make that belt look big on them. Yeah. <laughs> It's like they made it specifically for her, and then yeah. everybody else who's had it are like, yeah, oh, she's, yeah, because they yeah, made the like, Nyla title. Rose got that. And she's like, this isn't even big enough for my clit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, she fucking she was Leon Ruff before Leon Ruff fucking, fucking okay, debuted. Uh, hold on, guys, I'm gonna pause right now. Up next, the double or nothing main event. It is. For the AEW Championship, which Kenny Omega holds versus Orange Cassidy versus Pac, I will go to the man who has delivered passionate promos on this. The great Bresky 99, deliver us your prediction for the main event. I'm actually terrified that because we're not WWE, you know, then the guy who stood, the guy who stood tall is going to win. But I'm, I'm really, I'm like, fucking please don't. So I'm not going to go Orange Cassidy. Um, Pac, I can't. Like it would be weird. It'd be too too rushed and too kind of out of nowhere for Pac to win because like you kind of for a guy like him, he deserves a build up. And as much as I don't like Kenny as champion, not because he's a good heel, but because he just sucks. Um, I'm gonna have to go with Kenny. Like something happens. There's gonna be some interference. Maybe someone turns heel on someone else. I don't know. But fucking, I mean, it's gotta be Kenny. This if it's Orange Cassidy, if it's Orange Cassidy, I quit. <laughs> this might be uh, unanimous as well. I also pick Kenny. The belt collector is going to go on a rampage because we all heard what happened to um, well, Osprey, right? Yeah. Uh, oh, dude, I hope he wins the belt and WWE buys the company. So technically, Mox and Kenny both work for Vince. Cesar. <laughs> Cesar, who's winning this triple threat match? Fucking Kenny, man. <laughs> like, it, it's fucking, yeah, I don't like chicken shit Kenny either. I like best bout machine Kenny, and I feel like he wrestles that way, but his character is so chicken shit to get there. That's where I don't like about it. Best bout machine Kenny, like I'm the best in the world, fuck you up Kenny. Yeah, that guy can have all the titles he fucking wants. I don't really give two shits. Sticks Adam. Yeah, Kenny Omega. Another unanimous decision here. Oh, by the way, if Brett doesn't, I mean, if, yeah, Britt Baker doesn't win. DMD doesn't win. I'm 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 off this podcast. I'm not watching. It's it. Just, it just meant Gria by himself for like. Yeah, I'm off this podcast. He, he still extends it for five hours just to fill in the void. But just, <laughs> yeah, just, just like, him, so. I'll, I'll just, jump on. I, don't, just, I have no shame. Well, <laughs> yeah, I, won't, yeah, I, I won't be happy, but fuck it. Yeah, I'll get my Saturdays back. 
Because yeah. Out of the <laughs> four of us, which four of us are getting double or nothing? We know. Nah, man, I got a, I got a free site. I ain't trusting that shit. Yeah, drop, drop that, uh, drop that link in the chat, Caesar. I'm doing the free. I'll drop it in the chat. Wait, we're we not doing bonus points. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. The uh, what I call them? I don't know. I don't fucking know. I forgot what I called. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, okay. The you jump your drunk all the time. How am I supposed to <laughs> look who's talking, asshole? Now what's gonna happen? Side bet. Caesars. Man, what the fuck did I call it? Yeah, yeah I think you called them side bets. Yeah, I think you did. But there was a word for it, damn it. Crack of shit. No, that's Cody's finish. Caesars right. crack of shit. <laughs> yeah, fuck shit. What's the what's the fuck shit? Oh, definitely the good brothers are getting involved in a match. Okay. Definitely the good brothers. It's probably gonna be Kenny. Could be the Bucks as well. I get two points if they interfere twice. <laughs> no, you know you don't want to talk. You don't want to talk about different point differentials, man. Agree. It's not going to go your way. Keep talking, Caesar. I'm looking for that. Uh, I'm going. <laughs> anyway, we all know the good hose is going to come up there looking for a little. Uh, after they go in the back and get a little, uh, get a little blitz clears, you know, then they're going to be all loose. Fucking LDs to come out with the fucking dangly. It would set up if they really want to keep this like forbidden door open. You could have the Good Brothers come out, attack Orange and Pop. Have the Lucha Bros come out. Have best friends come out. It's a way for everybody to get on the card. Uh, and then it even potentially have like a round robin of those guys fighting each other, giving people wins, losses, and therefore moving up in the ranks. If you're really trying to build best friends up, it's a great way for get them back in there, and then still keep the the best friends. Um, Death Triangle feud going because we haven't seen much of that. Um, so I'm going with the Good Bros interfering some kind of way in some kind of match. Yeah, I don't think they're going to interfere with the Bucks. I think it's going to be Good Bros getting in on the main event. But I, they're definitely coming out. They're definitely there. Yeah. They're definitely coming out. Your extra points is Good Brothers interfering in the main event. Good Brothers interfering in a match, yeah. Okay, in the main event. No, he said any match. He said in a match. I said, I said in a match. In a, in a match, pick, yeah. Pick a match, not all the entire, have to pick a not match. Not the entire oh, man, he's trying to handicap no, every, you. No, 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 Every time I tell you to get specific, you're like, no, no, I, I said this. I said this. And I'm like, no, no. So you can't <laughs> so make me get specific. Your extra points covers the entire night. Well, they're gonna, yeah, they're going to interview for – I'm, I'm playing by the rules you set. I'm playing by the rules you set. <laughs> well, I just said they will interfere. Specific match. Good Brothers uh, interfere no, in no, what no, match? No, no, no. We've argued about this before. <laughs> they interfere in what match? A match say, on uh, the AEW card. Please say Serena D versus Rio. <laughs> I'll say LOLs. <laughs> what are your extra points? And it only counts for a specific match, so Cesar's is void. <laughs> Oh. See how he cheats for himself? You cheat yeah, for yourself, is, but hey, nobody hey, else can play cool. by your rules. Hey, add that Bresky, in the chapter Bresky, of the book what are your of extra shit? points, Bresky? Um, I'm going to say that, uh, fuck, I'm going to go absolute Ricky Starks Ooh. is comes out to distract slash interfere. Fuck, now I got to pick a match because of these bullshit fucking... God damn. Well, the Taz match would make sense, right? Well, I, well, I was going to think either that. Well, or actually, the Battle Royal would yeah. make sense if it came down to Christian yeah. and Will Hobbs. Well, hey, Amangria. 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 You know, you, you and I are on the same page. I mean, we keep Cesar out of it. We can just agree to any match. Oh, for, you know, oh, absolutely. Stark's interview. Wow. Fuck. I'll, I'll say, I'll say, I'll, I'll say Absolute comes out for the uh, fucking Hangman versus Cage and he distracts and it's the reason that Cage loses. I'm going to say he comes out for that one. Oh, actually, exactly. if he comes out for the Casino Battle Royal, I'm going to be mad. So Absolute Ricky Starks interferes in Cage versus Hangman. Yes. Okay. Uh, Sticks. I will go with something along the line. I will say the Dark Order will come out and aid Hangman Page. Oh, yeah, that's the, a good one. In the Hangman that's actually, Page versus that's the actually Rocky very match. good. Well, they say I, I figured it would have been that or the Sting match, but the Sting match would have been so obvious. Yeah, who cares? So about that match? Dark Order comes out to save Hangman. Yep, that's that's guaranteed going to happen. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's that's one. That's Extra eight, points, one. good, baby. I guess so. <laughs> Cesar, you pick a match yet? <laughs> yeah, I picked the main event, bitch. Okay, main event. <laughs> and, Gotta handicap this shit. Event. I bet you see Zara and I, uh, both of our picks are going to interfere in the other matches. In the other match, yeah. It's going to be mixed up. <laughs> All right, man, Gria, what do you got? Twice. 
<laughs> you guys, you guys picked like serious picks. I want to pick a fuck. Uh, I want to pick a fuck shit pick. I want to pick something fucking retarded. Um, I mean, I still pick something retarded for, just for the LLs. <laughs> um, Daniel Daniel Bryan is the Joker in the casino battle. Oh right shit! Oh, <laughs> oh shit! That's a awesome. Why don't you pick that one instead? Because he still had a, he was still having no compete clause. That's why Samoa Joe won't be the uh, Joker. Okay. Yeah, Man, that's it's, a, not Tony, been, it's not been thirty wow, days. Tony Con, Tony Khan comes out, cuts a promo. <laughs> Tony Khan is a Joker. No, yeah. Tony Khan comes out when there's two people left defeated, okay. and he's the Joker, and he throws them both out and has to fight Kenny. I'm the best Khan in the business. I was gonna wait, go wait, wait, my, wait. I was gonna I go Khan, with my shirt. He fights Khan the Omega. I was gonna go with my shirt, but instead I'm gonna say that Miro attacks Jake the Snake. Oh, oh that would be so one. good. But wait, man, wait, that, that actually could happen, though. Yeah, all of ours could. That's why I picked it. Man, Gray, I just want to let you know, in case you ever have doubt that, like, that, like, like, I don't know, like, if you ever, in case you ever wonder, like, I wonder if like Brett and Caesar enjoy doing the podcast. Or I wonder if they like doing it. Just know that we all watch AEW, and that's for all the proof. reason and one reason only, right? Like, yeah, for the only that's reason the only is for this need, podcast. That we show up every week because every week I want in the middle of watching AEW. AEW, I'm like. What, what am I doing here? Like, why? I could be just doing anything else with my time. Some of the shows are good, not but they're never consistently good. They're never That's like they're never they're never front to back. I enjoyed myself. It's always like yeah. that was okay, maybe, but what what was this booking? You know, it, 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 it's just, like, just in case you ever have any doubts. Raw. <laughs> no, I'm gonna actually want to say this. I am looking more forward to watching Raw this Monday than AEW's uh, AEW this Friday, yeah. if, because I'm actually because I'm, I'm actually awesome. interested. I'm actually interested to see who, how this new announcer turns out. That's the only. I, oh, I'm more true. excited. Oh I'm more excited. shit! Man, I gotta, I gotta watch. I'm more this. excited for Raw than fucking Friday and AEW. Right. That's, I'm telling you that. I guess, I guess I just can't watch ups and downs this week. I gotta watch Raw to see how the guy sounds. I'm I actually, I'm excited for him. I think it'll be good. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for sitting through the after party hangover tripod sessions with our special guest Sticks Adam and Julius Caesar coming in at the last second to give us his predictions of double or nothing. It is now time for plug mania brother. Sticks Adam, you're the special guest. You go first, my friend. Uh, even though we haven't cut a new freaking episode in God knows how long, go back and listen to old episodes of Still Real Pregame. And if you're watching this, go back and watch anything that is on Mangria, Mangria Fueled YouTube channel. It's Mangeria fueled, okay? Stay Mangeria, Mangeria fueled. like that one bitch said, Mangeria. <laughs> These are plug a mania, brother. What's going on? So you know I don't plug myself anymore. I have a place where you can go, and I have a thing that you need to say. So please go over to one of the famed Hall of Famers, Matthew JH 138, and tell him his commentary is as boring as the grass he cuts <laughs> every fucking week. Please, Matthew, just like you spell Matthew, like in the Bible, J H, they're right there next to each other on the keyboard. J H, right next the to each other. The letter is J H, not J A Y. It's J the letter. J H, and then one three eight, and then just pick a picture. Don't care which one. Scroll all the way to the beginning. Comment on his on his first one. Watch his story and write that shit there. I literally shit about did this this week. I yeah. Write about that shit on his story, if, if, especially if he posts some fucking grass. Be like, oh, there's your commentary. The fucking grass you watch grow. You boring piece of shit. Say all that. Say whatever you don't like you. Don't make it sound like me. Make it sound like you. Tell him his robotic voice sounds so boring. Like some pain shit. Die, die, die. Crack. From fucking the Attitude Era. And then tell him I sent you. Tell him Julius Caesar, the champ with the drip drip, sent you. Tell him I sent you. Oh, I left your boy. The great then follow, him, follow his boring ass shit while he drinks Coors Light through a straw. Cheers, man. The great Bretsky 99 Plug of Mania, brother. What you got? Um, I, yeah, I'm the two day version of Plug of Mania over here, but uh, I'm going to first give a shout out to the Zero pregame. If I'm even finished, if... we pull the pods over, nigga. <laughs> 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 I'm going to give a shout out to the Stereo pregame with Sticks and Andy because uh, 
honestly, if, if you if you work out, it's a good thing for your workout. Because I was um I was going back to the goblins goblins lives matter episode, oh. <laughs> um the last episode yeah. that came out. And I was on the treadmill at the gym, kind of getting, I do that for like an, as an ab workout, leg workout, cardio, all that shit. And I was laughing so hard that like, it was like flexing all the ab muscles, like when you laugh. So like, it, it actually is a good workout tool. So if you, if you know, if you're working out and you want to go laugh. Hours long too. <laughs> yeah, five hours. On but the it's five eight. hours of good goddamn ass content. Yeah, we, got yeah. kicked, we got kicked off and had to regroup. <laughs> five hours on the fucking tread, inclined treadmill. I'm um, going to listen to that fucking bullshit. But uh, go listen to Serial Pregame. Uh, whenever it comes out, go listen to old episodes. I was on it in the very beginning, and then it kind of devolved into just fuckery. So <laughs> um, go listen to that. Um, Mangria Fuel's YouTube page. If you're listening to this on audio, then what are you doing? Go over to, to YouTube, search Mangria fueled uh mangria space fueled um if you're all watching this on youtube already check out um check out the rest of the page we got appw after party for wrestling where um megastar such as austin gunn actually make appearances um megastar. you know go- wow megastar holy shit well, throwing well, that shit around though I throwing believe, that shit around i believe <laughs> i believe the only reason he really be considered a megastar is because he was in the ring with the superstar of the year the great Bresky 99 took him uh, to his limit Took him to his damn limit. Yeah. Made him a megastar. Yeah. He wanted him to look good because that's just how benevol- benevolent Great Bretsky is. He is the opportunity just, around APPW. So he wanted to make sure that our guest looked yeah, good. Yeah, because he's an easy win. Ask me. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, but go check out check out all the other after party hangovers. Um, last week was an incredible intro from Joel Gertner, uh, the quintessential sud muffin. Oh. That was go check that shit out again. Um, oh, even no. just for the intro. Um I need yeah, the view. Check- <laughs> yeah, my green needs the view. <laughs> um, this is a undercover this is the under most underrated content it's a sleeper. channel it's a sleeper it's gonna sneak on up on you yeah like bill cosby yeah. back like four years ago. i shouldn't have said that, have said that. <laughs> <laughs> well you gotta finish it now shit yeah, you gotta yeah. finish the Hold thought now. Yeah, come on now. like bill cosby four editing. years ago before he went to prison <laughs> for editing yeah oh uh, hey, hey, donna what up and donna if you still Yo, shout out to up? donna oh shout out to Andy. uh be uh shout out Check out, check out all the other tripods. Check out all of APBW. Um, because Mangria on his own with no, with no egging on from anyone on the tripod, put it all into little, put it all into lists and compilation. Uh, you know, it's lists easy on for YouTube. You to watch you hoes. So yeah, watch he, all of it. He, he did no that all on his own. No excuses, no more. No excuses. Do this yeah, shit. Mangria did that all on his own. And actually, I would suggest I'm gonna be, uh, I'm gonna be doing this as well. Mangria did it for all the awards. Um, uh, I'm gonna be binging through the entire thing at some point this summer. So definitely recommend you do that as well to catch up if you're not caught up. Um. But if you want to listen to me, my dumbass talk about shit that's not wrestling. Some t- most of the time it's not wrestling. Um, I have my own podcast. It's called the Faux Pod Podcast. Haha, get it? It's spelled T H E space F A ah, six gets it. <laughs> it's T H E space F A U X space P O D. Um, play on words of, of of the faux pod. It's a play on words, but you know, it's just me for usually for about an hour and change. Signs are longer, signs are shorter. Uh, just shooting the shit with a friend of mine, you know, whether they're in college, they're, you know, they're my parent, they're an adult, they're, they're Mangria sticks and Cesar have all been on it. Uh, Jake's been on, he's been on the, on the spot every now and then. Um, Andy's the been on it. Worst episode of that podcast, by the Jesus way. Oh yeah, Christ. I know. It's terrible. Um, I, I was embarrassed. I almost quit the podcast. In the you industry should after be. That one. You should be. I was desperate that day. I didn't have a guest, you know, I should, I should have just. You could have interviewed a fucking broom that you had in your closet. <laughs> Um, yeah, so you're sticking on it. Or grass yeah. or 138. <laughs> yeah, shit, you should have 138 on there. Fuck. I'm trying to, I don't know, I'm trying to plan out the best time to have them on. Uh, it's just, I got to, I try to always plan out based on like the stats that Anchor gives me of like, oh, there's a lot of chicken. Like, oh, I'm like, I'm 57% from Spotify or chicks. So I want to get like another guy on here. So I even it out. So that kind of thing. Um, but uh, yeah, so yeah, all of these guys have been on it. My friends have been on it. It's really, I think it's really interesting because, you know, it's different people's perspectives, you know, whether they're young, old um smart or not you know the, you know like jake um you know and they kind of come on and they give their takes on the world it's not always wrestling like last week last week's episode um was episode 56 with zach mayer um talked a lot about investing finance and stocks um capital stonks. management stonks. stonks we actually talked stonks. about when we talked we did talk about wendy's um with the wendy's bre- the uh, breakfast Ooh. menu um with some wendy's news as well related that back to stocks so it's a lot of very interesting things it's a different thing every week um definitely go check it out for a lot of different viewpoints you know follow us on instagram it's at the faux pod dot cast on instagram and there you can find joke of the week polls I post about new episodes all the plugs all that fun stuff um so go comment on there twitter at the faux pod underscore cast 
Um, so follow, subscribe, give us a five-star review. Um, I find it's really interesting. We actually just celebrated the one-year anniversary with episode 55 was the debut of the group sessions. Um, that was a longer one because, you know, it's three, four, four, three other people. I, I was, I kind of felt like Mangria a little bit. I'm um, trying to manage all that time. And, uh, you know, it's not, not always the, mo- the most fun, but it was definitely rewarding. So go check out any episode that I like to do sometimes. You know what? Just scroll through. You get to learn something new, but something you already know, you get to learn about an entirely new human being. Just scroll through. Be like, I'm going to scroll through the archives. Bam, I put my finger down. Episode 16 with Jake. Oh, I'm going to scroll to a different one. I don't want to listen to that one. And, you know, you scroll to a different one. And you go like, oh, episode 26 with Julius underscore Caesar. That was a good one. Julius Caesar, of course, the reason why you use Zoom now. You scroll up a little bit, you go, oh, episode 39 with Claire Nichols. Or, oh, what's this? Episode 7 with Charlie Cox and all these different people. Learn something new about a new human being or learn something new about someone you already know. Learn about the world. They're all very, they're all very time stamped because of the topics we talk about. So go check it out. Also on my Instagram at the great 99. So go follow that. Apologies to Matthew J H one thirty eight. It's probably hard to do commentary when I'm oh, losing, when I'm losing my mind when Caesar's whooping that ass and I'm just going, oh my god, Caesar, Caesar, the BBC, the BBC, and Matthew J H J H is trying to talk and I'm stepping all over him. I love though how it, and this has happened every time we've done guest commentary. I think. How it's like a little bit behind the mat, like a little bit like a, like behind the mat. It's, way, it's behind another. Yeah, yeah, it's like Caesar shows, with yeah. the BBC, and like he'll go like one, and then Mangri go, "Oh my God, the BBC!" <laughs> 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 but go check out ABPW. It's fun. It's entertaining. Yeah, really. so it's fun. better booked. It's better so booked than good. AEW. I'm a better booker than Tony Skeets, by the way. Tony oh Skeets. fucking Mangria, miles. Mangria. I have a humble request. Could wait, you... wait, wait. When is that pay per view? Survivor Series trash? We gonna just take on ABB Dub? Can you please cut Tony Khan ass promos? <laughs> as oh, ten, ten cunts wouldn't, but I need, Glimmer, I, need, uh... I need that messy hair wig. Yeah, you gotta get this. I'm, I'm pretty sure devil. you can find one pretty cheap. <laughs> whoever I guess, whoever I guess uh, kills the million calorie Mitch, the mystery guy. Whenever he pops up, no, I guess I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy a Merkin. I'm gonna buy a Merkin. <laughs> put it right here. <laughs> But anyways, oh. ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in and listening to our predictions and wax poetic oh, wrestling of the week. The Great Bresky 99, Stixie Drip Drip the Miracle, Big Carpe himself, Julius underscore Caesar. Thank you guys for your time. We shall return next week with the predictions result. Who gets punished this time? Probably me. But ladies yeah, and gentlemen. Yeah, you pick fucking Riho. Of course you got punished. Yeah. Until next that's time. Horrible. All hell, Jesus Christ. Unless you're Jewish. Still a bitch. Still a bitch, Senek.